Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a do-or-die game here on Arby's Nationals Hockey on Rogers TV as the London Nationals have been pushed to the brink here in Game 5 between the Chatham Maroons and the London Nationals in what could be a fantastic game. Uh, Nationals put their back against the wall and they're going to have to put on everything on the line tonight as you look at our story of the game right off the bat. Our story of the game is season on the line tonight. Simple as that. The Nationals win. Their season continues. They lose. Their season is over. The last time that the Nationals lost in the six-game series was to the Leamington Flyers back in 2015. And the Nationals haven't lost the Maroons since 2008. So tonight is going to be a big game. Now we look back to last night's game, game four of these uh, Sutherland Cup semifinals. The Chatham Roots picking up a big 4-3 game a win. Uh, all comes down to the big numbers that you can see there. Owen Flores starts the game for the London Nationals, makes 47 saves. However, not enough for the Nationals as uh, Noah Sazbo Zabo scores midway through the third to make it 3-2. And then with the goalie pulled, Cameron Welch scores with 2.45 left in the third to tie the game. And Lucas Fancy scores the minute 20 to end it there as the, as the Maroons come out with a huge 4-3 win in regulation. So just a massive third period for the Maroons. Comes back in the contest. Um, the positives that the Nationals can come up, take away from that game, though, uh, Owen Flores, phenomenal effort. And Ryan, Ryland Bowers, once again, puts up another goal. Yeah, absolutely. From that last game, they just have to take away. You can't give up till the end. You can't let the goals get you down. You have to continue pursuing and pushing until the buzzer hits zero. Looking between the goalies and Med right now, a uh, little bit of a change of pace for both teams, as we see here on the uh, in this game. We're used to seeing Aiden Barry and then Dobrik in the other on the other end for the Maroons. We're seeing Owen Flores, his second start of the playoffs for the Nationals, and Nolan DeConing getting back in the net for the Maroons. DeConing came in relief in last night's effort for the Maroons and led them to victory. Was a big help in their first round series win. So they're both going to be relied on heavily here tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Goaltending is a huge aspect, especially in the playoffs. Your goaltender, it's super important that they're on their game because there's not a lot of room for mistakes, especially when you have high-scoring teams like the Nationals and the Maroons. And with that, we'll send it down to ice level for our opening ceremonies. traditional lands we are gathered upon this evening. Fans, will you now please stand if you are able, remove your hats, and join Tony Other in the city of our national anthem. Set for our opening pay, a puck drop, we will take a look at the keys to the game. Keys to the game for Chatham tonight is to spread the scoring. Chatham had eight different goal scorers between game two and three where they scored 11 goals total. They've done an amazing job generating offense, which is their key to success. With the return of all their players, from the past few games, they're close to back to 100% and they have a lot of scoring power tonight. For London, their key to the game is the shots. London's shot totals have been below 30 in most of the games so far in the playoffs. 
after seeing the totals in the 30s and 40s in the regular season, they've had a good amount of offense time. But it isn't resulting in high score totals that we've seen throughout the regular season. It's very uncharacteristic that we've seen at the Nationals so far this series. Uh, the sh as you said there, JC, the shots total just unbelievably low compared to what we expect out of this team. Normally extremely high offense running for the Nationals, but uh, right now they're running into an even higher offensive-minded team in the Chatham Maroons. As puck drop comes, we start off in the end of the Nationals as both teams battle for control. Puck will come out, picked up now by Jeff Burridge. Burridge will bring it across the right of blue line, just staying on side as Riley Wood. And the puck we stole him back, and here come the here come the Maroons. Woo! Whaley, he'll pick it up and dump it down in the offensive zone. No Arsenal will pick it up as they try to break it out as the Maroons go off for a change. Just a dump down into the offensive zone by Arsenal. A little too much, and that will go for icing, and we'll bring it back into Nationals territory. The Nationals are going to have to focus on playing simpler hockey tonight and just focus on getting those shots on net. Doesn't matter if they're pretty, doesn't matter if they're ugly, as long as they get them on net, hopefully they'll generate some rebounds, and that's going to be an important key to the game tonight. Absolutely. You know the Nationals are going to try to keep it simple, really work on getting those shots on net, try to get some bodies in front of Dobrik. They've, they've ran Dobrik out of a game before. Game one, Nationals won 8-1 in that contest, and Dobrik was the starter originally. So they're going to hope to come back hard. They're deconing. Uh, deconing was the starter in that one. As uh, they'll hope to try to replicate that tonight. As uh, you got a great effort out of Owen Flores in game in game four. So you're hoping that he can replicate that again tonight. Puck gets sent behind the Nationals net. Played along the boards. Tori Alba tries to get it out. He gets stopped. Tori Alba his first game back on home ice. Second game of the season of the series. He'll battle down low, and ta he takes down Spence hard with a tripping, and he's going to get a penalty right off the bat. That's the Nationals, a little chippy to start the game. Julian in there with Bowers. Puck finally touched up by the Nationals. So we'll see the call. Tripping is what will be coming here to Tori Alba. We've seen Tori Alba be very physical in previous playoff games, and it's evident that he's bringing that tonight already with two barely even two minutes in and already in the box. For the Nationals, this is not the great start probably that they wanted, but sometimes penalties happen and it's the way it is. Nationals will have to start to bounce back from an early penalty kill. Penalty kill throughout the entire series has been phenomenal. The Maroon did finally break that streak that the Nationals had of shutting them out with a with their first goal of the game last night. It was on power play. Played by Whaley. He'll try to throw it down in the corner, but it gets a little too much on him. Catch the netting and go out of play. The first goal of the game is going to be really important tonight. I find both of these teams, they feed off of that momentum. So whoever gets the first goal of the game tonight, it's going to be huge. Face off now just outside of Nationals territory. Whaley picks it up. Sends it over to Galinsky. Galinsky throws a big hit right at the blue line by Sanavi. I he puts Galinsky almost right into the bench. Yeah, I was going to say, he almost hit Barry there. I think he did. Another shot right on to Owen Flores, and he'll hang on and get that whistle. Flores is always sporting those beautiful green and gold gear of the one nights. Huge hit, almost off the boards, onto the Nationals bench. The Nationals are starting off tonight's game strong. Uh, Sanavi, not, we didn't see too much of that physicality throughout the regular season, uh, but it's been a much different force for the Nationals throughout the playoffs, and uh, that's been a big help for them as they'll try to draw, use that momentum to try to build something up here. Bow, uh, Burick, he'll try to bring it across the blue line, gets stopped up, kept in at the blue line by Monroe as he'll dump it in and try to kill off some more time. Galinsky, he'll bring it out of the zone. Hustles by Chard, dumps it past, gets by two Nationals players down low. Played over to Fancy. Fancy, just a missed pass on Spence. Breakaway chance here for Chard. Chard has to hold up just a little bit, gets over to Burge. Burge takes that shot in tight. Nice save there by DeConing. Behind the net, Galinsky. Glad they moved, made the puck move pretty quick as Bowers' is, Burge is right on top of him. And now we're to Fancy. Fancy crosses the blue line, gets past M McGowan. Gets hit in the corner. Back up to the blue line. Here comes Burridge again. Has Brown right on top of him. He'll just dump it into the offensive zone, and he goes off for a change. 
25 seconds left in the power play. Huckley picked up by Clark. Clark moves quickly to get by Beaufray as he'll carry it across the blue line. Walks it, takes a shot right at the slot, but just gets deflected wide. Back to the half wall. Paranuzzi. He'll try to move it to the point. Sandovi gets the block on it. Ends up right back on his stick again. Now Puck will be picked up by Sandovi, and he'll clear it. Oriyama back on the ice, back to five on five action. The Maroons manage to pick up two shots on the power play. Puck gets brought across the blue line. Right down in the offensive zone, right out front. Flores has to make an awkward save. He did a really good job of catching that rebound. His eyes are on the puck. He did a good little jump leap there, I saw. But the Nationals are doing a great job on the penalty kill so far. You can see them mapping out that box formation and working on getting the puck down to the moon then. Face off of one by it, Welch. Welch getting his first action here on Nationals ice. Return to the Maroons lineup in game four. Play back at the blue line, Whaley. He'll just dump it down, try to get a bank off the back wall. Puck will come right to the blue line, and Fancy can't quite get a hold of it. Back over to Whaley on the far side. He's got room to work. Gets it across the blue line, in tight now. Simons tries to bring it down low, can't get a shot off. Back to Welch to the blue line. He takes a shot. Deflected wide again. The Maroons continue to apply a lot of pressure here to the Nationals. Nationals finally get a hold of the puck. Brought up by Wood. Wood, pressure on him by Clark. He'll move it around one, tries to fight off, continues to maintain possession. Right out front, tries to get it to French, but French can't get the shot off in time. Bunker, he'll deflect it down in the corner. French right on top of him. French gets his stick a little too high on Zabo and is going to get a hooking call. Puck picked up by Gervais. He dishes it up to Fancy. Fancy across the blue line. He takes a shot as he gets put down hard by Holmes. Holmes taking a bit of exception to Fancy. You can see the Nationals getting a little bit frustrated here with a good swing at the puck down at that other end. This is ideally not the start that they wanted, having two penalties within the first five minutes of the first period. But in game three, London did a really good job of killing off eight power plays for the Maroons. Another interesting thing just to sort of take a look as well, you see Cameron Welch wearing the C tonight for the Shadow Maroons. Uh, they have a rotating uh, like group of leadership on the team. Because I believe on Saturday night we saw it was uh, Par or Simons who was wearing the C. I played down low. Nationals will clear the zone and sent all the way back down in the Maroons territory. DeConey will come out and play it. Just a little bit of pressure applied by Burridge. Fancy. Throws it behind the net. Nobody there is charged. It's going to be the first one on it. Lucas charged. He gets taken down to the ice. Burge comes in for support. He fights off Fancy. Battle of the 19s. He tries a wraparound attempt. Can't get enough curve on the puck. And it just goes into the far corner. Galinsky. Picks it up. Brings it out. Now over to Fancy. Fancy can't quite handle the pass. Chard in there as well, he tries to get it up. Puck goes high in the air, batted down by Lucas Chard. Over to Arsenal. Arsenal rims it hard around the boards, gets to the blue line, kept in by Glinsky. He walks in, takes a shot, blockered away by Flores. Natural try to clear again, picked out of midair by Spence. Right over to Glinsky again, he takes a shot, another save by Flores. Flores had to be sharp so far. He's standing on his head tonight so far. Back to the blue line, Fancy. Throws it down low. Ray in tight. Simon tries to get it and try about it. But can't quite get by Flores as he manages to hang on. The London crowd showing their appreciation. Yeah, the Nationals are going to have to move those bodies out to the D-man to block those shots like we've seen them do many times before. They're giving the Maroons way too many opportunities to get shots on Flores. Shots 7-1 in favor of the Maroons so far. Possibly due to the fact the Maroons have now had two power plays. But Huck will be picked up by Simons. Now over to Clark. Clark manages to hold the line. Sent down low again. That gets blocked. Brown will try to pick it up. Now behind the net to Graham. Graham gets a stolen off his stick. 
Holmes will try to clear, kept in by Whaley. Now to Brown. Ran behind the net. He gets taken down. Holmes right on top of the puck. Nice little move to avoid the uh, offensive player for the Maroons and manage to get the puck out. Penalty does expire. French back on the ice. Five on five once again. Clark carries across the blue line. Brings in the offensive zone. Walks in. Takes a shot. Glove saved by Flores. Another rebound. Flores standing tall still. Brown will pick it up. He'll dish it into the corner. Back to the blue line to Clark. Oh. Over to Backick. Backick will just try to throw it down low. Try to get a pass out front. No one there as the Nationals will attack the other way. Julian just throws it off the back wall, bounces right out to Koning, will get a hold of it and hang on and force the face off as the extracurricular starting up once again. Tonight is going to be a very intense game with the physicality that we're already seeing tonight and the high scoring that we're expecting to come throughout the game. Both these teams have goal scorers and we can expect them to show up tonight as this is the Nationals do or die game. But not not too surprised why we see the reaction to that last play as well. Um, just that little extra shove as, as the whistle goes. You know, teams always try to stand up for their goaltenders. Burns uh, clearly don't want anybody touching to Koning as much as they didn't want anybody touching uh, Dobrich, as well, Dobrich as well. Sent over to Cunningham. Cunningham, he crossed the red line, just dumps it in as the Maroons try to chase after it. Back to the blue line. Puck just gets by Spence. And we'll go all the way down for icing as it didn't touch anybody. Uh, something to note about the Nationals, they have a favor about the Koning. He hasn't been seeing a lot of action. And he hasn't had the chance for to get that rubber bouncing off of his pad. So hopefully when they bring the puck down, do generate some shot opportunities, they're going to catch him off guard because he hasn't had a lot of shots so far this period. For what, most likely what the Nationals are hoping to do right now because typically the Nationals' offensive scheme is just go at him quickly and almost catch the Koning sleeping on that last play. Here come the Maroons, counterattack. Galinsky dishes it over, just shot right on, right into the glove of Owen Flores, and he'll hang on. Flores has been playing a great game so far. He's really been standing on his head. For the Nationals, I don't know what they would do without them. they got to start giving him some defensive support. 47 saves in game four and already starting out with 11 in the first eight minutes of play tonight. So Owen Flores coming up to play exactly what the Love Nationals need from him right now. Face off one by the Nationals. Set back by McGowan over Arsenal. Arsenal right up the gut to, to French. French, nice move, gets around Dittmer, tries to bring it in tight, can't quite get around Spence. Back to the blue line, Arsenault. Throws it around the boards. Played on the far side, Bunker can't get to it. Miller will, and he'll clear the zone. Picked up now by Gervais. He brings it in. Nice pass over, right in tight on Flores. Flores has to fop down to find it, and manage to hold on. A little bit of an awkward grab right away, but good job tracking it. Yeah, absolutely. He sees the puck. He's got eyes in the back of his head, and he knows where the puck is at all times, and he's doing a phenomenal job of keeping his net empty. So you get another face off to the right-hand side of Owen Flores. The Nationals, you can see, they're doing a good job of passing and picking up that speed as they head down the ice, and that's what they need to keep doing to hopefully generate a goal. Puckley picked up by Sanaby. Sanaby, full height of steam. He tries to make his move past one. He dishes it over and tight shoot. What a chance in tight. But just can't get it to go. The best chance so far the Nationals have had. And Rouge almost counterattacks. Skullthorpe almost gets a piece of it and goes the other way. Nichols, golden chance, gets the puck right back on his stick but can't handle the pass. And Zabo just out, out speeds him to the puck. Down the other way, Griffiths. Throws it over to Nichols. Back the other way, stolen by, Fra by Fancy. Fancy taken down hard again by, Fra by Sanaby. 
Fancy's been in the middle of a lot of altercations throughout this series. Not too surprising. Back to the point. Brought in by Welch. Welch takes that shot. That one just misses wide. Another penalty coming here to the Nationals. Back it. Over to Clark. Clark, lead pass over to Welch. Welch to Fancy. Across the blue line. Fancy tries to dish right in the slot as he had Paranuzzi heading right down the middle but could not complete the pass. What an opportunity the London Nationals just had there with almost an open opportunity for Nichols there, but he just couldn't quite seem to handle the puck and gain control of it. And then looking here down to the end of the ice, one of Nationals generating another penalty for themselves. They have had lots of practice so far this game on their penalty kill. And moving forward, they're going to try to ho hopefully lay back on the penalties a bit and the sticking a bit to limit the amount of penalty kill thing that they have to do. It's a lot of just unnecessary like stick work the Nationals are doing, which is getting them into trouble right now. Uh, just undisciplined play. you got to keep the sticks down. They're getting them up high, and that's where you're starting to get these calls. You get the hooking. You get the call right now. Um, the tripping call was a little low, but it's still just that undisciplined play with the stick. And uh, they'll try to figure out exactly what's going on. There's two Nationals in the box, and Nichols getting swapped out here. As Griffiths will come in. Trying to figure out what that second call. With Griffiths and Monroe in the box. It might be a little bit of the nerves getting to them too. You know, this is their do or die game and they just are trying to do everything in their power. And sometimes that means resulting to those unnecessary last movement of the stick, movement of the, the body, you know, checking in the boards. Spence and uh, Burge both coming over to the uh, referee area just to have a conversation, figure out what's going on. Burge not too pleased with what the final decision is, as there are two penalties coming here to the National. So we're going to see some five on three action for two minutes, as it, as it is a four minute double minor going to Griffiths, and then a two minute to Monroe. This game is definitely not starting out how the Nationals intended it to. Burridge, hard work right off the bat. You can see uh, the frustration boiling over a bit, but uh, comes with some good play defensively. Ten minutes passed here in the first period. Shots 12 to 2 in favor of the Maroons as they continue to dictate play here against the Nationals. Brown takes a shot and scores! Right in the slot area, Brown opens the scoring with his seventh goal of the playoffs. The Maroons executed that power play perfectly. You could see them regrouping in their own and behind their net, regroup it up, pass it over to the players, hiding high on the blue line. They took their time, they set it up, they knew exactly what they were doing, and it was a nice low shot, and they deserved that goal. Just managed to find the gap in the triangle that the Mer Nationals are trying to build up. Brown, right place, right time. One of the younger players on the Maroons roster and has been a big factor throughout this entire series. Absolutely, and when you only have three men on the ice, there's only so much you can do and so much many players that you can cover. Back to some five on four now. This one for 330. Puck we sent down to the Maroons territory. As Deconi almost loses it. Spence has to work quickly to get back on top of the puck. Spence down in the corner, Chard right on top of him. Chard tries to kick it up to Burgeon, who will get it over on the Chard stick again. Lucas Chard just trying to get all, trying to get as much possession and kill as much time as he can. Over to Clark. Clark brings it across the red line. He throws a cross side, picked up by Brown. Brown just knocks it down just low enough to not go for a high stick, but his pass to Whaley just a little too much, and will go for offside. You can see some frustration continue there as Chard just a little, a little extra swing at the puck after the whistle goes. Yeah. As uh, you can, uh, there's a lot of emotion going through that national event right Yeah, now. absolutely, Kyle. And it's also evident when Chard, you can just see his speed pick up. And as he was down here with the few Maroons players, he's trying to stick handle through all of them. And that's just not going to work tonight. They have to work together as a team and keep up that good passing that we know they can do. Whaley, he tries to move it up the wall. It gets it to fancy, but quickly turned back the other way. 
Whaley to Galinsky. Galinsky, cross ice pass over to Fancy. Fancy over the blue line. Drop pass intended for Whaley, but Beaupre beats him out to it. Still kept in the offensive zone though. Fancy walks in, he takes a shot. That gets blocked as he gets put down to the ice again by Holmes. That's the second big hit between those two tonight. Another hit out front, Holmes with a big hit. Puck finds its way in the net. Flores arguing with the ref as that goes in. Couldn't see the puck from way down here, but it's evident that Flores is frustrated that the ref didn't blow the whistle there. And you know what? Maybe he should have because the puck, you couldn't see it anywhere. You can see just a mess down low. Puck is out the whole time. And just a mess of bodies right out front. Finds the stick of Fancy. And Lucas Fancy scores his fifth. There and were Maroons players in Flores' crease. I can see and understand his frustration for that resulting in a goal. Face off one by the Maroons. Now up 2-0. Shots are 14-2. Nationals have not had a shot in the last seven minutes of play. Clark sends it up to the blue line. Kept in by Brown. Over to Spence. Puck gets deflected out of the zone as that one intended for from Paranuzzi. DeConey. He'll throw it over to Spence. Spence can't handle the pass. Paranuzzi will be there to pick it up as he gets hit harder to the wall. Nationals bringing a physical aspect to the game, but that's about it right now as uh, their offense has been non-existent so far. DeConey behind the net. Puck will be picked up by Spence. Bring it out over to Clark. Across the blue line. McGowan just pressures him. Puck gets thrown right through the crease. That gets deflected. Kept it at the blue line by, by Spence. Open, loose puck now. Picked up by Burge. Burge across the blue line. Just shows some patience. Tries to make his way past Clark. Clark, good footwork to get the puck right back. Galinsky across the blue line. Fights with McGowan down low. Burge in there as well. Maroons try to pick it up and will. Over to Fancy. Fancy to Galinsky. Galinsky tries to put it on net. That gets deflected down in the corner. Kick back to the blue line by Simons. Galinsky, he'll throw it behind the net. Arsenal can't get a hold of it. Nationals will now throw it all the way down the length of the ice. 22 seconds remaining onto the penalty to French or to Griffiths. Behind the net. Maroons will try to set up and give it over to Fancy. Fancy comes up the left wing side. Throws it behind the net. Monroe right on top of that. Gets it to the blue line. Zabo gets a shot on. Nice tip by Welch, but can't get anywhere with it. Penalty is expired. Back to five on five again. Shot from the blue line. That gets deflected off the back wall. As the Nationals will go off for a change. Zabo, lead pass for Skullthorpe. Skullthorpe gets a piece of it to deny the icing, but that's about it. Monroe, he'll bring it over to Bowers. Bowers, cross ice pass, right onto the stick of Julian. Julian tries to get it to Tori Alba, but it just overskated a little bit as the Nationals have to clear the zone. Brought out, across the blue line is Gervais. Throws it behind the net. Down low, another big hit thrown by, Ar by Arsenal this time. Brought across the blue line. Walks in, Bowers takes a shot in tight. Another chance, Toriyama shoots, but right down low is DeConing, manages to track it well as the Nationals show some life. Griffiths penalty just expired. He got four minutes for kneeing. I didn't quite get a good enough look at it, but what a penalty to get. Yeah, not, the, not exactly what you wanted to see, especially from one of your younger players. And it's tough, especially when you go down on that five on three for a full two minutes. And uh, the Maroons power play throughout the regular season was solid. You knew it was going to break through eventually and does in this game. Cunningham now brought over across the blue line by Dittmer. Dittmer drops it down low, bouncing puck goes high in the air and grabbed by Flores and he'll hang on once again. We saw the Nationals generate 
a really good scoring opportunity in the Maroons' end against Deconing, and he almost didn't have it. If the Nationals had another player on top of him, they would have had a good opportunity to score. The puck just got stuck in his pad, and last second he was able to get a glove on it. Puck gets brought out. The Nationals try to get it out of their own zone. Will draw their first power play of the game. As fortunes could change here, as it will be uh, Isaac Legood heading to the box for tripping. It was super one-sided. Now it's nice to see that the refs are giving the Maroons a penalty and giving the Nationals a little bit of a break here at the end of the first period. Back to the blue line, McGowan. Keeps it in, the Nationals going to have to try to do something to set up and get some <laughs> offense generated. Zabo right on top of him. Puck gets cleared all the way down and the Nationals will have to reset. Stolen down low, right back in the slot. Welch, he takes a shot and scores! And things go from bad to worse as the Maroons pick up a shorthanded marker and make it 3-0. The Nationals are just shaking their heads. They're like, what is going on? This is not the game that they expected to make. Third shorthanded marker of the playoffs for the Chatham Maroons. And the captain comes up big here as Cameron Welch, with just nobody near him right in the slot, puts it right past Owen Flores. Stolen again, Galinsky. He tries to just walk right through the Nationals defenders. The puck is turned back. McGowan sets up behind his own net. He brings it out for a skate. Cross the blue line. Dumps it in. On to the far side, Jacob Julian. He'll keep it in. Over to McGowan again. McGowan walks into the slot. Just tipped out front by Chard. Back out front again. Over to Bowers. Bowers winds up. Throws it down low again. Port forced off the puck in the corner is Julian. Chard in there trying to help out, as is Bowers. Three Maroons, three Nationals. Spence will come away with the puck. Tries to clear it out of the zone and will. McGowan gets a piece of it, but not enough to stop it. Oh, McGowan, he'll come up the other way. Just accidental contact made right in the, neutral, right in the middle of the ice. Ryland Bowers gets taken down. Back on the stick of Burridge. Burge will lead the rush. There's a puck out, tries to get it past Welch. Welch, great stick work, denies that, and sends the Nationals back into their own zone. 15 seconds left here in the power play. Down low again, Welch all alone just managed to move the puck right into the slot. Over to Whaley, back again, Zabo, he takes a shot from the blue line. Control down in the corner. Picked up by Simons. Simons just applying all kind of pressure, fighting off four Nationals by himself as the good back on the ice for some four on, five on five action again. Now over to Whaley. Whaley behind the net, picked up again. Cross ice pass over to Paranuzzi. Paranuzzi will try addition in the offensive zone. That gets blocked by Holmes. Now gets sent well over the net of the Nationals. Brown, he tries to throw it behind the net. That gets blocked and picked up by Monroe. Monroe gets stopped right at the blue line. The Nationals recover. Over to Deacon Holmes. Now to Nichols. Nichols off to Sanavi. Just out of the reach of Sanavi, and that will go for an icing. You can look them out amongst the crowd tonight, and you see a lot of Maroons fans. They have a crazy, dedicated fan base with such what a like community the Maroons are. They love hockey out in Chatham, so that is definitely contributing to the Maroons' play tonight and the role that they're having after they score. You can hear all their fans cheering, and that's something that you usually don't get when you're playing away from home. Over to Clark, that is one a good thing that you do see a lot with the Chatham Maroons is their fans do love to travel uh, anywhere you go, if it's here, if it's St. Thomas, Kamoka, Leamington, anywhere, the uh, Maroons fans do love to travel to watch their team. Case in point, you can see right there yeah, exactly. one of the uh, Go Maroons Go signs uh, right across the way from us. It's got to be an exciting thing for their community tonight with 
the Maroons being up 3-1 in the series so far. Puck back to the blue line, kept in by Clark. Clark takes a shot, that gets deflected into the corner by Holmes. Holmes tries to fight off a couple Maroons. Puck will be picked up now by Beaupre. Over to Sanavi. Sanavi just gets denied the puck and sent back the other way. Back over to Beaupre. Cross the blue line. He has to wait for support. Cross ice pass gets deflected on a stick and ends up on the stick of Lagood. Now we're Arsenal. Arsenal to Nichols. Nichols just deflects it right on net to Deconi. And Deconi will just hang on to it as a just slow skating Burridge comes in and forces the face off. The shots are setting up. 15 for the Maroons and five for the Nationals. They're not generating those shots tonight and that is their key to the game. So in order to come back from this three goal deficit, they're gonna have to figure out a way to generate more shots on net. Face off one by the Nationals. No, Arsenal takes a shot from the blue line. That one finds its way on net, but the coding blockers it away. Bouncing puck in neutral ice. Just out of the reach of Lucas Chart. Picked up down in the corner. Foul for the puck continues. Finally comes out on the stick of the Nationals. On the, on the, on the stick of Simon. Simon tries to bring it out front. He gets hit down to the ice by Char. Puck gets up to the blue line. Zabo can't get a hold of it, so that'll clear the, the length of the ice. Zabo spins around. Gets it over to Fancy. Fancy, little back pass. No one there. Mer Nationals across the blue line. Lucas Chard, backhand down low, tries to get it onto the stick of Wood down low, but couldn't quite get it to go. McGowan, he tries to throw it down in the corner. That gets blocked. He's trying to get it out of the zone, gets it down to Chard again. Over to Burridge. Burridge waits, puts it right out front onto the stick of Chard, but Chard can't get a shot. Zabo picks it up, and he'll break it out for the Maroons. Gets to the red line and just dump it in right onto Flores. And he'll hold on for what should be the last whistle of the period. We've seen Flores play a phenomenal game so far. Other than those three goals, there's not much you can do when you don't have your team working with you. And those penalties that were generated certainly didn't help. It's going to be a very interesting uh, conversation, I think, that uh, Coach Dave Mastos has to have with his team uh, going into that first intermission. As uh, I believe this is the first time all season, at least on home ice, the Nationals will go into an intermission down 3 nothing. So quite a shocking turn of events that we start out here in Game 5 of the Western Conference Semifinals. The Maroons lead the Nationals 3-0. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. Canada is a multicultural country, and I know that there are a lot of people like me out there. We need a support to do our job in our native language. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts, broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. Watching Rogers TV. Do you enjoy watching Arby's Nationals hockey on Rogers TV? Then join the crew. Volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. Visit RogersTV.com slash volunteer to sign up. Right before the playoffs started, we did catch up with a few of the uh, 
like graduating players of the London Nationals, including defenseman Thomas Monroe. Uh, my minor hockey, I always played AAA in Mississauga. I played with the centers and then the reps. Um, then after minor midget, I went to uh, St. Andrews College for two years, uh, which is just a prep school. Um, and then after that, I went to Cobra Cougars in the OJHL. Uh, and then after that, to Collingwood Blues, and then came here. I like to think I'm an offensive defenseman. I like to think I'm pretty skilled, good skater. Um, not the biggest body, but I definitely get in the way, so. As one of the 2001 born players on the Nationals, Monroe leads the team on the ice and in the dressing room. Uh, obviously, I'm a 20 year old, so I like to think of myself as a leader, help the rookies out a little bit, be a good guy in the change room. Uh, as on the ice, yeah, I just try to give him my full effort, help the boys win. Monroe joined the Nationals in a trade from St. Mary's, and his first game back from a recent injury saw him facing off against his former teammates. Uh, I was there the season before uh, when COVID happened, so we didn't play any games, but I'm uh, really close to a lot of those guys. I go to school with them at Western. Uh, so playing them first game back, definitely a lot of a lot of chirps for them, but uh, friendly chirps. So it was good seeing them uh, and it was nice to play them first game back. During his time at St. Andrews College, Monroe won a championship with that team. Experience he brings with him to the Nationals as they hope for a long playoff run. Uh, St. Andrews was phenomenal. I, I loved it there. It was a next level uh, sort of environment. Uh, obviously, I learned a lot of things there. I had a great coach in David Manning. Um, and I just think sort of the experiences I went through with those guys as I'm going with these guys will help me uh, go through playoffs and obviously hopefully take it all away. Monroe sees Dave Mastos' coaching style as an asset as the playoffs approach. I think he's, he's just a loose personality. All the boys really like him. He's one, one of the guys. Uh, obviously, he's hard on him when he needs to be, but he's always there. He's always there to support, got any questions, and I think that really helped the playoffs because none of the guys are scared to talk to him. If they need advice and need help, uh, he'll help us. Asos' advice is going to come in handy as the Nationals have to claw their way out of a 3 nothing hole after 20 minutes of play. I'm Matt Chalmers, I'm a VTR Off and Master Control Technical Director at TSM. I decided to volunteer at Rogers because I was interested in TV as a profession and it seemed like an awesome way to learn and get out and actually experience what the TV world was like. So I got to do uh, did the hockey, baseball, football, and it helped me build relationships and um, understanding people better and being able to work with different personalities a lot easier. If you want to volunteer um, and you think it looks like a fun thing, do it. Just know that you're going to have to put in a lot of work. And um, but that work is very worth it. And it's a very fun time. I'm Wendell Clark with a word about winning. We all know it takes a team effort in any sport and with any challenge. You can be a part of the winning team that shuts out impaired driving. Whether you're out on the town or just hanging out with friends, drink responsibly. Always have a plan for a safe ride home for yourself, your family, and your friends. You'll be helping to shut out impaired driving. Visit ArrivalLive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive. Drive sober. Watch, play, and win every Monday night at 8 p.m. Play Optimus TV Bingo on Rogers TV. Cards are available at multiple London locations and are good for all three games. Weekly jackpots total $3,000. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center after 20 minutes of play, uh, one team came to play for game five. The other one still trying to get out of the starting blocks as the Chatham Maroons holding a commanding 3 nothing lead after 20 minutes, 20 minutes of play. Yeah, absolutely. That's not the outcome the Nationals expected in the first period, which is hard to bounce back from, especially when you have so many penalties generated against you in the fir few first few minutes of the first period. The Nationals basically spending the entirety of that first half on the penalty on the uh, penalty kill and uh, ends up uh, in the back of their net three times uh, coming from a lot of the big names on the Chatham Rooms. Yeah, the Nationals know who the scorers are on the London. On the Nationals know who the goal scorers are on the Maroons at 
the, as they've had the same eight goal scorers in game two. Yeah, and they've come out big so far in this game. Uh, a lot of the big ones. That one, I think, right there, the last goal there by Cameron Welsh. The penalty on the penalty kill and it just comes out big, all alone in the slot. Brown his seventh, Fancy his fifth, Welch his second. Two power play goals and a shorthanded, so special teams huge in this first period as um, coming into yesterday's game four, the Maroons had not scored a single power play goal and now have scored three in the last game and a half and huge markers for the uh, Maroons. Yeah, absolutely. It's just clicking for them. They're on a roll. Their fans are here tonight. They're pumped up, and they want this series. Absolutely. Now, the one thing that's keeping the Nationals in this contest as well right now, Owen Flores back in between the pipes for the Nationals, playing what we expect out of him, which is some fantastic hockey. Flores has been standing on his head for the Nationals, and there's only so much that a goaltender can do when you're not receiving that additional help from moving the puck out of the crease, moving the players out of the crease. And the second goal was generated from that. He could not see the puck. There were players on his net, and I wouldn't chalk that up to his fault necessarily. It's more of a team effort as a result of those three he's, goals. He's still tracking the puck well. Uh, that second goal that Scott scored, it was just a big cluster in front of his own net, bounces out to Fancy, buries it there, and the third one, you have Welch just all alone in the middle of the slot. It's tough to make a save when you have a goal scorer just with that kind of golden opportunity, um, just you know, when you can't really get square again. Um, but as we said, all of that led to, um, most of those goals came from the power play um, discipline, a huge issue for the Nationals uh, throughout that first period. I thought it was just a lot of undisciplined plays with the sticks. Yeah, absolutely. They're getting frustrated, and they want this win so bad. They need this win. It's a do or die, and it's showing on the ice, and they're getting put in the box for it. And it's just, it's unnecessary, and they're suffering from it, as the Maroons have been able to put up three goals on the board as a result of them generating so many penalties. Absolutely. The Nationals are going to have to try to bounce back here as they are down 3 nothing. We want to take the time to thank our volunteers. Whether you're a community producer, on-air talent, or part of the production crew, you have made an incredible commitment to serve our community during the pandemic. We couldn't have done it without you. We couldn't have done it without you. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you for showing up. And stepping up in another unusual year. We appreciate you and all you do for Rogers TV. I'm Mallory, and I was walking home one night when an impaired driver hit me. He had been over-served in two bars before getting behind the wheel. If the servers would have called him a cab instead of serving him more alcohol, my life would be the same as what it used to be. I think servers play the biggest role in keeping us safe because it's up to them what state the person's in when they leave. Refusing service isn't personal, it's the law. On the season finale of London Lights, Dan welcomes David Shore, the creator of the TV show House. They talk about growing up in London and how David went from a lawyer to a TV writer and producer. Tune in Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. Now back here, we're taking a look at our Paul Duarte and Associates shots on goal. The heavily favored shots in for the Chatham Rune, 16 to 6 over London Nationals, which gives us our current score of 3-0. And if the Nationals are able to make a comeback in this contest, their work is not done as Game 7, if necessary, will be back here on Rogers TV Saturday night, 7 o'clock puck drop, as always. And we will have to hold with clenched teeth to see if that happens. Nationals look like they're going to do a goaltending change. Aiden Barry led to, led to set out, ready to head out and start the second period for the London Nationals. Uh, he's the main one who got him here in the first place. 
He might as well put him in and uh, see if he can hold on and try to finish the job. Yeah, absolutely. This has got to be exciting for Barry stepping in to possibly the Nationals' last game of the season. He's hoping to be a brick wall for them for the rest of the game tonight in hopes to continue on with the series. You know, he does not expect this to be the last game for them as uh, he expects to be in action Friday night in Chatham for game six. But to get there, this Nationals offense is going to have to be much different from what we saw in the first period and be more akin to what we saw in game one as the Nationals will start out here. Burridge, Chard, and Julian. So a big art or as uh, Wood, sorry, big offense coming out for the Nationals. McGowan, Arsenault, as always. And the top line for the Maroons out on the other side with Fancy, Welsh, and Simons. Face off one by the Nationals over to McGowan. McGowan, he'll just hold and wait. Finds Wood on the left wing side. Why would he cross the blue line? Just throws it into the far corner. Burge will try to dump it down over and get it to Chart. Battle for it in the corner. Two Nationals, two Maroons. Loose puck ends up on the stick of Simons. Now comes out. Welch will break it out. Gets it over to Fancy. Fancy can't do anything with it as that's quickly turned over. But it'll go off a Maroons player on the bench. And we'll have a whistle. We've seen lots of whistles in the first period. There was a lot of whistles to get started off with, with, which kind of staggered the play a bit and prevented the flow and the momentum from starting up. And the Nationals need to start generating that momentum right off the bat here. They don't want to have any time to waste. Yeah, Nationals just need to get, try to get the flow, try to dictate the game, bring it to the back to their pace, and not let the Maroons dictate how the game goes for them. Face off one by the Nationals. McGowan will just pick, pick it up and rim it down into the, into the corner. Burge can't quite get a piece on. Simons will bring it out. Now picked up by Whaley. Whaley brings it across the blue line with speed. He takes a shot from outside. Barry takes a shot and over to Simons and he buries it as that makes it 4 nothing. Arsenault not happy there as the Maroons will take a 4 nothing lead on their first shot of the period. Barry saved the first one there. It's up to the team to kind of get on top of that Maroons player and save that second goal. We've seen this with their previous other goals. They haven't been able to clear those rebound players, take a player in front of the net. Maybe it's starting a good idea for the Nationals to start to play man-to-man -man hockey. Unfortunate bounce there for the Nationals as that one goes right off of Fancy, finds its way onto the stick of Simons. Simons makes no mistake burying, burying that one. So the usual suspects once again for the Maroons. Come up big. Paranuzzi down low. Gets it in tight over to Graham. Graham tries to jam it out from behind the net. Picked up and brought the other way by Torrealba. Torrealba across the blue line. Moves past Spence. Torrealba tries to get it over to Bowers. Bowers picks it up. He throws it over. Gets it on the stick of Julian, but Julian quickly stripped of the puck. Brown over to Paranuzzi. Paranuzzi walks in. He takes a shot. That goes off a leg and wide. Kept it at the blue line by Dittmer. Dittmer gets hit by Bowers, picked up by Pace Roth. Pace Roth tried to take it out the other way himself. Kept it at the blue line, thrown down low. Torrealba couldn't do anything with it. Nationals go off for a change. Brown tries to move it over. Avoids the hit by, by Beaupre. Sent down in the offensive zone. Griffiths will pick it up. Griffiths brings it out, and he'll try to find an outlet pass. Across the blue line. Walking in, Beaupre over to Sanavi. Sanavi can't quite get a hold of it to get a shot on. Thrown out front. Still can't get it onto a stick. Other way. Here comes, here comes the Maroons. Over to, Ch over to Cunningham. Back to Galinsky. Galinsky, he gets hit right at the blue line. Sanavi full head of steam. He's got one man to beat. Brings it across the blue line. Waits a little too long. Can't get any support. Still fights for it. He gets hit hard into the boards. Huck we brought out. Ross the blue line by Lagood. Moves it in. Stolen off his stick. Nationals will try to bring it back the other way. Three on two. Nickel. Monroe. Monroe walks his way in. He takes a shot. That one just over the net. He saw daylight in the top corner but couldn't hit it. You can tell the Nationals' frustration 
but there's so much hockey left to play and it'd be unfortunate for them to just give up here as we know they're not going to we know they're going to fight through they are a character showing team and we're going to see that in the second and third period here that puck by Thomas Monroe did manage to hit the crossbar, so the Nationals came within an inch of getting back in this contest and getting something on the board. Play Darson now at the blue line. He'll just dump it down. Vanderson gets in on the action. Puck still loose. Now will come out. Vanderson picks it up again. Stolen by the Maroons. They'll bring it back the other way. Simons makes a nice move around Arsenault. Carries it down behind the net. Back pass over to Welch. Welch tries to throw it around. Fancy can't get there in time. Gets the blue line. Zabo does a good job at getting, keeping it in. Back to the blue line. Simons. He gets hit hard into the boards by Vanderson. Puck still cleared down to the far corner. Whaley tries to dish it over to Simons again. Still kept out. Vanderson aggressive on the play. Picked up now by Bunker. Over to Arsenault. Arsenal, nice little backhand pass, gets it to French. French can't clear the zone, kept in by Whaley. Another shot on net. Barry makes the save. Whaley throws it behind the net. Welch to pick it up. Fights off McGowan. Zabo right on top of it. Zabo gets hit. Finds the puck still. Throws a cross ice. That one goes off a leg. Still kept in. Dipper plays it. Dipper gets taken hard into the wall by Bunker. Nationals' physicality continues to come out, but it's not doing anything else for him. Back of the wall. Bunker can't get, can't get a hold of it. Kept in by Brown. Brown throws it behind the net. Arsenault circles back, throws it off the wall. Finally, will clear the zone. Dittmer will pick it up and go right over cross ice and Spence. Back to Dittmer. Lead pass onto the stick of Paranuzzi. Paranuzzi does a nice job avoiding a check, just walks in, tries to get a shot. Great stick work by the Nationals to deny that shot as he had a great opportunity. Back the other way comes Wood. Wood walks around Spence, gets a hold of the puck, tries to move it out into the slot as he had Burge going right down the middle. Back over to Pace Roth. Pace Roth will dish it up to Chard. Chard avoids a hit, still walking in, gets it, tries to get it across ice again. But Nationals being a little too aggressive with these cross-ice passes, and they keep getting picked off. Puck down low again. Burridge tries to get to it, but Dittmer just stands in his way. Back to the blue line again. Got a big shot this time by Holmes. That gets deflected out of play. And as always, our second period brought to you by JNF Concrete and Ready Mix. Looks like the Maroons drew a penalty just there. This is going to be a good opportunity for the Nationals to get themselves back in this game as they have a power play moving in here. Face a power play coming here. Nationals 0 for 1 on the power play. A goal here will go a long way to bring some life back into this Nationals team. Face off one by the Maroons, but they can't quite clear. Played down low. Behind the net. Back to the blue line. Picked up by McGowan. Still holding on to it. Walking in. Takes that shot right up high by Bowers, and it will be held on to by Dakota. They just need one. As we've seen, both these teams thrive off of momentum. You get one, the second one comes easier, and then third, and then fourth. That's just how it works. Your team gets excited, and you move forward. Off win again by the Maroons. This time they will clear it down the length of the ice. Barry comes out and play. Gets it over to Burridge. Burridge cross ice to McGowan. McGowan cycles back. Chard loses his stick. But the Maroon Nationals will carry it out the ice. McGowan cross the blue line. Sets up the cycle. Over to Chard. Chard hit down low by Whaley. Still maintains possession. Gets it over to Burridge. Burridge walks in, shoots, and scores! Jeff Burge puts the Nationals on the board. The Nationals captain, Jeffrey Burge, coming in clutch for them after a four. The Maroons were up four goals, making this game a 4-1 game. The Nationals are back in the game, and they're not done yet. The Nationals finally have a sliver of life in this contest. 
And we'll see what that does to bring some momentum into these legs of the Nationals. Face off one by, Jar by Gervais. Picked up now by Backick. Backick's lead pass on the, on the, on the mill. On the Miller. Down in the corner. Sanity. He tries to break it out. Puck will come out to the red line. Brought into the offensive zone by Nichols. Nichols, he loses the tire. He picked up again by the, by the Maroons. Back the other way. Big hit again by Sanavi. Sanavi's back out tonight. He's bringing that physical contact out for the Nationals. You know, we usually see that from the Nationals defense, like Deacon Holmes, like McGowan, and Sanavi has been doing it for the forwards, which is what you need to generate that momentum forward on both ends. Lucas Chard on that play once again. Just fantastic work by him, as always. Uh, not too surprised that if the Nationals get back into a contest, it will be thanks to uh, his ability. Yeah, absolutely. We saw some great teamwork there, passing the puck again with that puck patience. Griffiths taken down, now brought back out. Sent down the length of the ice once again. Not enough for an icing, but Clark will have to play it. Over to back it. Now to Galinsky. Galinsky, long pass over to Lagoon. Play up the wall, kept in by Cunningham. Behind the net again, Monroe. He'll pick the fuck up. Moves up to the blue line. Beaupre will get it out, just almost onto the stick of Nichols. Nichols takes the body, bring it across the blue line. Is Monroe. Monroe takes a shot. He gets deflected, but takes Clark down to the ice as a receipt. Back the other way. Galinsky across the red line. Puts a little too much on that as that one just floats into the netting and out of play. Quite a few times tonight, we've seen the Nationals just absolutely demolish a Maroon. They're just full speed ahead, they just run right through them. And I think that's a key factor into generating speed, generating that excitement, and that physicality of hockey is such an important aspect of the game. Face off just outside of Maroon's territory. Gets scrummed, but ends up on the stick of the Maroons. Dittmer across the blue line. Pressure down low by McGowan. It's put into the boards, now picked up by Brown. Brown avoids the hit. Picked up by Arsenault, over to McGowan. Lead pass, here come the Nationals across the blue line. Julian walks in, Oluxia, that scores! Jacob Julian! Buries it top shelf and the national scorer for the second time. We're just seeing a whole new life from the Nationals. After that goal, Captain Jeffrey Burns, that's exactly what you need from that, your captain there. And then just there, another great goal from the Nationals. Julian, a beautiful shot. Makes no mistake, his sixth goal of the playoffs. Walks in and just rifles it top shelf. Timeout being called now by the Chatham Maroons as the Nationals storming back here in the start of the second period. Yeah, absolutely. We can see the Maroons. I mean, sorry, the Nationals taking, regaining control of this hockey game as now they're on a roll with two goals in a row. Absolutely. Momentum complete swing the other way now. As it looked a little dire as the Maroons come out early in the second period and score to make it 4-0. So the Nationals score two goals quickly. The Maroons coaching staff just get on top of the team, try to calm them back down, get them back focused in this contest. They still have the, they still have the lead, so a lot of work that has to be done for the Maroons, or for the Nationals. But it's not over yet. Absolutely. What a great job Masso did in between that first and second period, re-motivating his team to step back out onto the ice and do exactly what they just did. Face off one, but it's going to get called. And we'll see a bit more scrum going on there between Bowers and Whaley. Yeah, the, the Nationals are going to have to stay disciplined. They're going to want to continue on this momentum. They don't need to draw any penalties to kind of throw them off a little bit. Icing was the call, so we'll bring it all the way down into Maroon's territory. Nationals out there with a combination of Burridge, Chard, and Bowers. So despite it being a, a elimination game, the Nationals going to a, a line I've never seen before, uh, not seen them put together since uh, about midway through the season. 
Yeah, absolutely. Bowers has done a phenomenal job in the playoff season. He's a playoff hockey player, and he's been putting lots of goals on the board for them, so that's exactly why he's out there tonight uh, with, uh, with this line. Or a char. Char walks in. He tries to get a shot on net. Kick the side, back to the blue line again. Arsenal puts it on, puts it on. That gets blocked. Right down low again. The National still make, causing chaos. Picked up now by Welch. He'll bring it back the other way for the Maroons. Puck gets thrown hard around the boards, gets up to the half wall. Simons will keep it in as he gets it past Arsenault. Down low again, Welch tries to just break through the defenders. Clearing attempt by Burge, can't, gets picked off. Kept down low again by Fancy. Maroons still trying to find the puck. We're going to see another penalty coming here to the Nationals. As McGowan just gives a few extra shots to Fancy. As uh, Fancy doing his job at uh, just getting the Nationals off their game. Uh, he has been the cause for at least three or four power plays for the Maroons throughout this series. And uh, just doing a great job of just uh, getting under the Nationals game. Yeah, absolutely. Lucas Fancy is one of the top players for the Chatham Maroons. He is small, but he is mighty. He knows exactly how to poke at the Nationals to get them to draw those penalties. So face off to the left-hand side, Owen Flores. Two minutes for cross-checking onto, onto Owen McGowan. Back to the blue line over to Spence. Spence throws it down low to Brown. Brown waits. Back to Spence. Spence almost, almost bobbles it. Keeps the puck in. Gets it over to Clark. Clark, nice move. Walks in. Takes the shot. That goes off the shoulder of Barry and out of play. Big Barry having to come up big so far in some key moments here in the second. He got that first shot off. We've seen that before in the previous series. He just the first shot on that. Once he gets that out of the way, he's done a very good job so far. Face off one by the Nationals. Deacon Holmes will try to clear it out. Gets stopped. Kept in now. Almost stolen again. Bo Prey right on top of the puck. Now picked up. Deacon Holmes. Three on one the other way. Holmes gets it over. Tries to get it over to Monroe. But that one gets picked off as some great defensive play down low by Galinsky. Denies the opportunity, or that could have been dangerous for the for the Maroons. Absolutely, a little bit more patience from Holmes there would have been good to generate possibly a goal there. You know, you hold on to the puck, you have that good patience with the puck. That's what we've seen from goal scorers such as Bird. We've seen that from Tori Elba. We've seen that from Sanity, and that's how they generate those goals because they hold on to it. They wait and wait for those passing opportunities to move the goaltender around the net. Four shorthanded goals on his playoffs for the Nationals. So it's not, a, a, it wouldn't be a surprise if they're able to bury one. Play right out front, just slides off the toe of Simon Stick, or that could have been a 5 2 game. Puck behind the net, Arsenal can't reach it. Paranuzzi back to the blue line again, picked up by Fancy. Now over to Glinsky. Glinsky walks in, he takes a shot off the shoulder of Barry. Back to the blue line. Whaley keeps it in. Tries to get it over to Fancy. He can't handle the pass. Arsenal's on top of it. Bow for in the corner. Three Maroons now. Puck will squirt out. Go back to the blue line. Whaley keeps it in. Gets it onto the stick of Fancy. Cross ice to Glinsky. Glinsky takes a shot right to the chest of Barry. Back the other way come the Nationals. Lucas Chard across the blue line. Waits. Takes the shot. That gets blocked down low. And DeConing will hang on. We're seeing more and more extracurriculars after the whistle as this game advances, especially in front of each net. Not too surprising. Uh, over the regular season, like the rivalry between London and Chatham, it does tend to build up as the season goes on. And uh, we've seen it a bit in game one and more as the series has progressed. And uh, not too surprising, it uh, gets more and more after every whistle as we get deeper and deeper into the series. Still 23 seconds left in the penalty to McGowan. Face off one cleanly by the Maroons. Clark over to Spence. Leaves the puck for Paranuzzi as here comes Clark across the, across the blue line. He walks in. Circles back to the blue line to Spence. Over to Brown. Down to Paranuzzi. Back to Brown again. Brown takes a shot. That one gets blocked away. 
Power of penalty does expire. McGowan back on the ice. Spence back to Brown. That puck is sent right back into the neutral ice. Bunker will pick it up. Cross ice right over to Nichols. Nichols across the blue line. He's got Tori Alba with him. Takes it on net. Right out front. Loose puck. Just can't get it to go. Tori Alba, golden opportunity, but just could not finish. Amazing play by Nolan DeConing. Picked up now by Spence. Over to Clark. Now we're to Paranuzzi, across the blue line. Leads it for Spence. Spence takes a shot, right in tight again. Barry makes the save. Another shot, and right in the slot. Brown just misses wide. Brown again, he'll hold the line. Rolls it back down low. Picked up by Pace Roth. Maroon's on a change. Nash will try to catch him sleeping. Wood across the blue line. He gets taken down by, by Whaley and has to draw a penalty. Whaley arguing out the rap about the call but they will do nothing for him as the Nationals get another power play opportunity. Already scored once on it tonight. Another one will go, well, he'll get them within one. What an opportunity we just saw down there by Tori Alba, just wide. What a generation of an opportunity. The Nationals are fired up, they're ready to go. They're on a power play and they're hoping to generate some more opportunities like the one we just saw. Face off one cleanly by the Maroon. Spence will try to rim it around hard. Gets it just past Burridge. And it'll go down the length of the ice. Shot 28-14 in favor of the Maroons. But we've seen a lot closer in shot totals throughout the second period as the Nationals have come alive here. Walks over, takes a shot by Bowers. And decoding has to be sharp as he hangs on. They got to focus on getting those men to the net as soon as that player takes that shot because you never know what rebound opportunities are going to be presented from DeConing. Nolan DeConing has made some big saves and some big chances for the Maroons so far. They're going to have to keep asking him to step up to the challenge as the Nationals looking like a much different team here in the second period than what we saw in the first. You can tell they got the life, a little life back in them. They're playing their game of hockey, and so far in the second period, they're controlling the movement of the puck. Face off scrum, but picked up by the, by the Maroons, and they'll just clear it down the length of the ice. Barry, oh, and the Nationals will have to regroup. Go, 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 go. Across the blue line comes McGowan. Tries to avoid a hit, ends up on the stick of Chard. Now to Burridge, picked up again. Here comes Galinsky. He has an opportunity, walks down, takes a shot. That one gets deflected by McGowan the last second and out of play. Every time the Maroons get an opportunity, you can just imagine the Nationals fans just praying and hoping and just clinching. Because if they get that another goal, you know, the momentum can easily be swayed the other way onto the Maroons. And the face off to the left hand of the Barry. One by the Maroons. Over to Backett. Backett will just dish it down behind the net. The Maroons have really dominated the faceoff circle so far tonight. And winning a majority of the faceoffs can really help dictate play. Monroe brings it, or McGowan brings it up. Over to Burge. Burge gets it across the blue line, but the pass intended for McGowan ends up clearing the zone again. 40 set, 49 seconds left here in the power play. Over to Chard. Chard walks in. He takes a shot. That gets deflected into the corner. Back to the blue line. Owen McGowan. Over to Burridge. Burridge, he takes a shot. That gets blocked. Once again, Welch will pick it up, and he'll clear the zone. Maroon's going off for a change, bringing off some of those tired penalty killers. Over to Burridge. Burridge, lead pass. Just out of the reach of Chard. I think he got enough of it, so he's going to deny the icing. But the Nationals try to play it down low, quickly play it up to the blue line. Monroe can't hold the line. Back on the stick of Thomas Monroe. Just ends up giving it right back over to the Maroons. Across the blue line comes Welch. Welch takes a shot. That one just goes high and wide. Over to Wood. Wood and Nichols on the left wing side. Picked up by Bird. Bird gets to the blue line, but he gets turned back the other way by Welch. Welch, a uh, hard-working penalty kill for the Maroons as he ends up doing a, a brute force of the clearing for the, for the Maroons on that penalty kill as we are back to five on five. 
Pass intended for Wood. It goes all the way. Wood's claiming he touched it. But the linesman is going to say no, so we'll have an icing and bring it back into Maroon's territory, or into Nationals' territory. The shots are sitting at 28 for the Maroons and 15 for the Nationals. We're definitely seeing a lot more shots, as that's evident because the Nationals have two goals up on the board for them this period. But they're going to have to continue doing what they're doing to generate those shot opportunities. Face off down, just in the national territory. One again by the Maroons. Back to the blue line. Dittmer, he'll keep it in, get it by French. Wood, he can't handle the play down in the corner. Spence will pick it up. Still looking for that, looks for the pass. Still hangs on to it, gets it by, but can't get it by everyone. French will bring it out the other way for the Nationals. Throws it right in the blue, right to Griffiths. Griffiths, he'll take it, throw it down into the corner. That one gets stopped down low by Par by Simons, now brought back out to the blue line to Graham. Now over to Paranuzzi. Paranuzzi across the blue line, over to Brown. Brown walks in, he takes a shot. Barry's glove gets just a piece of it, but managed to keep it out. Nationals try to clear the zone. Tori Alba gets a piece of it. Over to Clark now. Clark foul for the puck with Nichols. Danny's Nichols going to draw a penalty again. Or no, it's going to be on Nichols who gets the penalty. So once again, the Nationals' penalty, uh, power, penalty kill is going to have to go to work once again. They're going to have to stay disciplined throughout the entirety of the rest of the game because drawing these penalties offsets their momentum, and it's very difficult, although we've seen it before, to score a goal when you're on the penalty kill. Both teams have shown some offense on the penalty kill. There will be a holding call going to Nichols. Maroons already two power play goals on the on the game so far, and you know they're going to be hunting for a third to regain a three goal lead. Face off scrum, Char tries to get a piece of it, but it, won't, it ends up on the stick of Whaley. Cross ice to Fancy, loose puck, open net. Galinsky can't get a piece of it. Here come the Nationals the other way. Lucas Chard, Jeff Burridge. Chard walks in. He takes a shot. That one goes off a leg. Chard open puck right in the slot. Waits. Puts it on net. That one just hits the side. And manages to stay out. The four check by the Nationals forwards. Almost too much for the Maroons to handle. Whaley, he'll get the puck out. Cross the blue line. Cross-ice pass over to Fancy. Right down low again, tries to get a piece of it. Simons, back to Galinsky. Back to the point, Whaley, he takes a shot. Barry tracks it well and he'll hang on. We're seeing so much back and forth in this hockey game. We're seeing an unreal forecheck from the London Nationals on their penalty kill, as we just saw there. Generating off of his own rebound, hits the post. Decoding would have had no chance there. Just slightly off, we're seeing the Nationals generate these opportunities where they're so close to putting that puck in the back of the net, but just not quite there. Lucas Chard has been all over. As we said, coming into this series, he has eaten the Maroons alive throughout the regular season. So to see his offense coming to life here tonight has been a big help for the Nationals to even being where they are at this time. Over to Galinsky. Galinsky tries a cross-ice pass. That's blocked by Sanity. Sanity gets a piece of it. Now the puck will be cleared down the length of the ice. DeConing will have to come out and play it. Beaupre right on top of him. DeConing manages to get just enough of it to avoid Beaupre. Over to Brown. Brown gets a bit of space to work. Almost stolen off his stick by Julian. Julian coming right off the ice for a change. Galinsky, he'll just dump it down into the Maroons, into the Nationals territory. Played down low again. Nationals, very aggressive penalty kill. What we're normally used to seeing from them, and it's working. Yeah, the Nationals are on top of the Maroons, not giving them a lot of space to have time to think about where they're going to move the puck. And that's a really good opportunity, especially when you're on the penalty shot. Pace Roth, great, great stick work. Puts the puck back to the blue line, kept in though by Brown. Back on a stick of Clark. Off to Spence. Spence just can't hold the line as the bouncing puck gets the better of him and he'll clear the zone. 
Yeah, like like I just said, the Nationals are on top of them, not giving them a lot of time to think about what to do with the puck, and therefore they're giving up the puck. The Nationals are winning those battles, and that's resulting in really good momentum for them. Faceoff one again by the Maroons, but the Nationals manage to keep pressure on and send it back into the Maroons' territory. Nichols back on the ice, five on five. Puck sent down into the corner, but it will be just enough for icing. And so we'll, the Nationals will get an opportunity to bring out whoever they want here for this faceoff in that Maroons' territory. That will be offside, it was the call. So still a reset just outside of Nationals' territory. We're seeing Bowers out there, we're seeing Julian out there, who have been phenomenal goal scorers for the Nationals. I bet you Dave Massos is putting them out there strategically because it would be nice to have another goal going into the third period. Bowers brings it in. Across the blue line comes Wood. Wood waits over to Bowers. Bowers takes a shot. That one just goes wide. Ends up behind the net again. Inside again, trying to get the pass off by Arsenault. Arsenault, go, or Griffith trying to go hard after it. And it'll get sent back in the Maroons territory. Spence will pick it up. Just leaves it there. Nobody there. Tries to put it out front is by Julian as he had Bauer sitting right out front. Picked up again. Sent into the middle of the ice. Back it will pick it up for the Maroons. Cross ice pass just intended for Lagood. Can't quite get a hold of it. Picked up by Wood across the blue line. Wood walks in, dishes it over. Can't quite handle the pass. Back out front again. Nobody there. Walking in, takes another shot there by Griffith. And that one gets deflected out of play. You can see the Nationals, they're just itching and they're so hungry for that next goal. And they've been so evident in putting the pucks on the net, taking their time with the puck to generate those key opportunities and those good opportunities to get a good shot on Kikoko. Well, the face off here once again. Scrum between the centermen. Puck, by puck finally bounces out, ends up behind the net for the Maroons. Whaley, he'll clear the zone. Puck will go down all the way. Will it be enough for icing? No. Arsenault, he picks it up. Ends up in the, in the feet of Anderson. Stolen by Fancy. Now to Whaley. Whaley across the blue line. Just over a minute left here in the second. Another hit right at the blue line as Tori Alvo runs right into Whaley. The physicality is continuing to increase. It started off really strong. We've seen the same physicality in this period. And the extracurriculars, which adds to the game, adds to the pressure to score more goals. Face-off win by the Maroons. Over to Whaley. Whaley walks to the hash marks. Put it out front. Big tip in sight by Welch. And we'll see another penalty coming here. A slash this time to for Tori Alba. We're seeing again here with the sticks. And maybe it's unnecessary, but sometimes it's necessary. In this occasion, it wasn't necessary. And it's just the Maroons know how to get under the national skin. Nationals continuing to take some of the penalties they can't afford to take right here in the second. As it's still down two goals, have to kill off yet another penalty. And going into the third period with a minute left on your penalty kill is not ideal for the Nationals. Back to blue line. Whaley keeps it in. Fancy. Back to Whaley again. Another shot. That one's up on the stick and Glitzky shoots and scores! And Dylan Galinsky scores this time. Had a chance at the open net earlier in the period, but will bury it this time as the Maroons take a 5 2 lead. The Maroons do a really good job of moving Barry out of his position, and they like that back door man, and that's how they've gotten a few of their other goals tonight. And you can see the Maroons fans are going absolutely crazy as they're very excited. The Maroons are up now, a three goal lead. Face off at center ice once again. Nationals bringing out a line of Nichols, Sanavi, and Bobrek. Puck is quickly brought by Dittmer, and that will just go right out of play. We'll have another face off here. 37 seconds left in the second period. 5 2 is your score in favor of the Chatham Maroons. It was 4 0 early in the second period. Nationals managed to bring it within two. But the latest goal by the Maroons puts them back up by three. 
first up. No. Flex that one out of play again. Shots 32-15 in favor of the Chatham Maroons. In regular season, the Nationals would have usually around 40-plus shots a game. So we can see that in the playoffs, they're getting under 30 shots roughly, and it's not allowing them to generate the goals and the goal opportunities that they need to be successful. Shot goes down, goes off the leg of Bo Price, still managed to keep in the offensive zone. Detmer, he clear, keeps it in the zone. Sanavi will clear. Puck gets quickly sent right back in. McGowan over to Arsenal. 10 seconds left in the penalty in the period. Puck brought out right into the slot. Sanavi tries to get a piece of it, not going to. And that will do it for the second period. So the Nationals' backs are against the wall, coming down to the last 20 minutes of what could be their season. Down three. As we head into the second intermission, 5-2 is your score. I am Justin Newell. I am an EVS operator, which is something that travels all over. So today, I am based in Winnipeg. And over top of the blocker. I used Rogers and my volunteering time there as a means of gaining experience. I found while I was there that I also gained some great friends and um, also some business connections to be able to further my career. Rogers was fun because I was able to do a variety of different positions technically. I've always tried to be a technician in many different sorts. So from being an audio mixer to a switcher, a replay professional, uh, to a camera person, it gave me a safe place and an encouraging place to be able to try different things, to be able to just, as Miss Bristle says, get messy. Was that four or five? He's lost count and still thinks he can drive. Do you think he knows that when he is caught and charged with impaired driving, he'll lose his license and a lot more? If he gets in his car, he'll face costs exceeding $20,000. Does he realize he could have a criminal record for his choice to drive? And it could be much worse if he crashes. I wonder what he'll be thinking tomorrow. I'm four, have a hold one at one five. Visit arrivealive.org to find out more. Arrive Alive, drive so. Do you enjoy watching Arby's Nationals Hockey on Rogers TV? Then join the crew. Volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. Visit rogerstv.com slash volunteer to sign up. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, the Nationals trailing the Chatham Roots 5-2. And in our second period highlight, we will talk to assistant coach of London Nationals, Dennis Marouk. Nationals assistant coach Dennis Marouk played three seasons for the London Knights in the 1970s, amassing 159 goals and 370 points in 193 games. He went on to play 888 games in the NHL, scoring 356 goals and 878 points, including a 60-goal season in 1981-82. That experience scoring goals as a player helps Marouk when coaching the Nationals offense. Pretty much, uh, I work a lot with the lines and with, with Dave and as well as doing the uh, power play specialist because uh, I was a pretty good goal scorer in the, all my career growing up as a child and uh, in the NHL. So uh, my, my professional part would be uh, you know, power play and, and, and working with the guys, giving them some pointers on you know, when they get around the net, what they, that they should be looking for and be a little patient in that. So that's kind of what I try to do with our players. Playing 14 seasons brings a lot of stories. Stories that Marouk tells to his current Nationals players, even if they don't always understand the references. Mr. Beaupre, I call him Donnie, which I play with Donnie Beaupre, a goalie. And he goes, who's Donnie? Who's Bo Donnie Beaupre? So they're just little things like that. And, and I, I kind of, you know, have some fun with them. I want to make sure they're having fun. If you don't work hard, you're not going to get results. So uh, I say, look at me, I'm a prime example. I'm not very big, I'm 5'8", and I had a dream just like you all have a dream. And, and uh, I made it and I didn't, I didn't let anybody take my job away from me. So I kind of work with them on that, on the mental part of it, that they, they realize that they are performing and they just need to keep working hard and, and things will happen if they do that. Joining the Nationals midway through the season was a tough adjustment for the coaching staff, especially when the team was already at the top of the standings at the time. Well, that's a hard part when you come in midway through because you, 
uh, you don't really know the players and you got to get to know who they are, what they're like and what things they like and what things they don't like. And, and it's just kind of become one big family. So you, the communication gap is really important. Uh, I don't yell or scream at any players. I'm a, if I tell them something, I, I always tell them it's always positive. Uh, and, and there's nothing negative. I'm, I'm here to make you a better player as well as a better, better individual off the ice. And I think that's where I, my talents come in. As uh, I've been there, I've done it. And if they don't listen to me, then they're then losing out on it. So that's basically what I try and do. And I tell them some stories about in the past and what I've done and things like that and where I've done and who I played with. So they're pretty excited about that. But I'm, I'm really here just to, to make them our team a better hockey team and and, and go and win, win the championship. Maruk's experience throughout the playoffs and in elimination games is going to be key if the Nationals want to claw their way back into this game. I'm John Abbott uh, from now Vancouver, BC, and we're working with uh, TSN out here in the West Coast and uh, have been since 2014. A lot of power play opportunities going Going through. back to when I was five years old, there was a big part of me that wanted to be in the broadcast business and uh, the ultimate goal, the ultimate, we'll ultimate dream was to be a play-by-play -play guy. Moves at the camel, he takes a bump by Paul Yu. I really wanted to understand how broadcast uh, came together from all aspects and so to me, local cable and the volunteer position within it was the perfect place to start. Scott Perry, Scott Perry, shot the score! I would not be where I am today without the help of the people that guided me at Rogers TV and the opportunity Rogers TV gave me. And it's been a huge benefit to me and, and that's an approach that if possible, I, I completely recommend. Summer days, summer nights, lots of things to do, places to go and people to see. If you're having a few drinks, be sure to plan ahead and get home safely. We don't want to pick you up. Drinking drivers risk injuries to themselves and others and take chances with their license, their jobs, and their future. Remember what's at stake and choose your ride, whether you're the driver, the passenger, or the party host. Thanks for supporting Sober Driving. I hope we never meet. Visit ArrivaLive.org to find out more. Watch, play, and win every Monday night at 8 p.m. with Optimus TV Bingo on Rogers TV. Cards are available at multiple London locations and are good for all three games. Weekly jackpots total $3,000. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, 5-2 to two is your score in favor of the Chatham Maroons and a, still a mountain to climb in favor of the Long Nationals. Yeah, absolutely. They got back into their groove a little bit in the middle of the second period, but still not quite to what they're used to playing at. The shots are only 15 total when they're used to having 40-plus shots in the regular season, and that's what they need to do to generate more scoring opportunities and put those points on the board. Coming into this period, down 3 nothing. The Nationals looked like they may have been down and out early as the Maroons made it 4 nothing early uh, with this goal, and it looked like it disheartened the team a lot on the first shot on Barry. But the team managed to come to life after that. They managed to find some way to put a puck in the net. A uh, beautiful pass over to Burridge, who just, the captain does his job, gets the team back in the game. Absolutely. He's a huge encouragement for the team. He's had a lot of points in the GOJHL. First, I believe, for goal. So he's a key factor in moving the team's momentum and generating them. And as a captain, he's done his job this game. He's got his team picked up, back off their feet, and back into the swing of the game that they know how to play. Only half the job's done, though. You still need to fight your way back in. As you see here, Simon's his third, Burge his seventh, Julian's sixth, and Nikolinski his sixth. Another two goals on the power play. Special teams have been a huge aspect of this game. Uh, shots once again. Chatham picking up 16 again in that second period. So just continue to just pelt whoever is in net for the London Nationals. In the first period, we saw it was uh, Owen Flores, now Aiden Berry. Both goalies have been trying to do their jobs to make a difference, but it's more or less that the offense isn't helping out the goaltending enough to, make, to really factor in. Yeah, of course, and as a goaltender, there's only so much that you can do when you don't have your teammates helping you out, moving those maroon bodies out of the front of your zone, out of your house, and keeping those pucks 
out. And Barry's done a great job in this period so far. And o Owen Flores did a great job in the first period as well. And now the Nationals are kind of picking up on that in Maroons and keeping them outside of their house. On the other end of the ice, we're seeing Nolan DeConing really standing tall in between the pipes for the Maroons. Uh, did get beat on a couple goals, but has come up uh, big on another few chances for the for the Maroons, really keeping them in uh, ahead in this game. The Nationals did have a couple chances where the puck just like squeaks through the crease and another ba another bounce here or just uh, get an extra stick in there. Um, and this could be a tie game. Yeah, of course, you could see the Maroon, the Maroon fans just like praying and hoping that that goal didn't go in because the Nationals had really good momentum there in the second in the middle of the second period there and the Nationals fans if they did capitalize on one of those goal opportunities for the caught decoding just a bit off guard this could be a completely different hockey game. Penalty killing still seems to be the issue for uh, the London Nationals in this contest. They've been on the penalty kill just every second you turn around it seems like. Um, what do they need to do in the third period here to try to minimize the fact that they've been shorthand so much? Yeah, they need to make sure that they stay disciplined. You know, you fight that urge to hit that extra stick. It's a lot of sticking we find with the penalties that they've been drawing. And they just have to fight the urge to not stick that Maroons player, even though you're very frustrated. They have to stay disciplined. They don't want to end up in the box in this third period. Three power play goals on the night so far. You're seeing here by the Chatham Maroons. They've really made the most of every opportunity they've been given on the power play. And the Nationals penalty kill, normally it's been fantastic, just is falling apart on itself so far tonight. Yeah, so far they need to, that's an aspect of the game that they're going to have to work on moving forward into this third period because the Maroons have been outplaying them, especially on their special teams. Now, with the Nationals coming into this game, your season's on the line. Uh, what do you have to do? You have to figure out a way to get the Maroons off their game and play that game that they were playing in the middle of the second period. They were completely controlling the puck. They were on the Maroons. The Maroons did not have a lot of time to think with the puck, thus them giving up the puck and the Nationals winning those battles, generating those opportunities and being able to generate shots and goal opportunities on Deconing. And as for the Maroons, what isn't broke, just don't break it. Keep it going the same way. Maroons up 5-2 as we head into the third period. Hi everyone, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you to each and every one of our volunteers. You are the lifeblood of Rogers TV. You're the reason why we've been able to keep going with programming over the course of this pandemic. Over the past year, whether it be TV bingo, our OHL productions, other mobile productions, or our various programs that have kept going virtually and on location, the volunteers and community producers that dedicate their time to these shows, they're the reason they stay on the air. And they're the reason that we are able to continue telling the stories that matter to our communities. So again, thank you on behalf of all of us at Rogers TV. On the season finale of London Lights, Dan welcomes David Shore, the creator of the TV show House. They talk about growing up in London and how David went from a lawyer to a TV writer and producer. Tune in Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Looking at our Paul Duarte and associate shots on goal after 40 minutes of play, 16 to nine are the shots in favor of the Chatham Maroons as the continues to roll for the Maroons throughout 40 minutes of play. And looking at our next contest here, if necessary, Game 7 will be Saturday night here at the Western Fair Sports Center. Same time as always, Nationals still have a ways to go. Have to come back winning tonight 
and Friday night. And brought to you, our third period, as always, brought to you by Collins Clothiers. Now, taking a look at our other game, our other series matchups here, um, it is the Leamington Flyers taking on the St. Mary's Lincolns as uh, the matchup between the first seed and the fifth seed. Yeah, absolutely. St. Mary's winning the first two games, which is really surprising as the Leamington Flyers have been a dominant force to be reckoned with throughout the duration of the season. And Leamington, not too surprising here, coming back. So their series is tied at 2-2. Moving forward, it will be interesting to see who takes that series. The underdog, the St. Mary's, or Leamington. So I... Uh uh, just shocking series what we had there. The fly, we did not expect to see the Lincolns jump out to a 2-0 series lead. Not too surprised to see the Flyers come back in that contest. The Flyers a constant threat to come up in that the, in the Western Conference. Uh, and uh, we're, we might not see that usual matchup of the Flyers taking on the Nationals as that has been a normal trend the last few, or few seasons here in the Western Conference. Uh, the Maroons looking to put an end to that and uh, stop the Nationals train to the Southern Cup set, uh, with the Western Conference Finals, which they have been in for the last six years at least. Every time they end up in that Conference Final against either the Chatter, the Sardi, the um, St. Thomas uh, Stars or the Leamington Flyers over the last few years. Uh, it's going to be a big difference maker um, if the Maroons can knock off the Nationals here. A lot is on the line in this game. Yeah, absolutely. Playoffs is anybody's game, and that's why it's such a fun hockey game to watch because anything can happen as we've seen here so far. As Puck drives, we just get Sever Puck drop. Both teams getting back on the ice now. That's a lot to go here. 5-2 is your score. The Maroons did come out early in the second period and potted their fourth goal. Nationals did strike back twice with two of their own to get back in the contest. But it's going to be a lot here to for the Nationals to get back in this contest. They're going to need three. And you know it's going to be a lot relied on. A few players in particular, mainly the starting three forwards on the ice right now. Lucas Chard, Ryland Bowers, and Jeffrey Burge. Absolutely. Dave Mastos, we can only imagine what he has been saying to his team in the change room in between periods because in the second period, they came out flying. And let's hope that they do the same here in the third. Face off one by the Nationals cleanly and picked up by Owen McGowan. McGowan tries to get it over to Bowers. That one gets picked off. Now stolen by Welch. Picked off now. Here comes Char. Char across the blue line. Ditched over to Bowers. Bowers brings it down low. Right in front. Burge puts a piece on it, but can't get it to go. Welch in the corner. He throws it behind the net. Will come around. Picked up quickly by Bowers. Stolen by Fancy. Fancy will dish it over to Welch. Welch clears the zone. He's got Simons with him. Simons takes a shot right from the red line. Right on to Barry, and Barry will hang on. Now the first whistle of the third period here. 33-16 are your shots after 40 minutes of play. Or as the Maroons continue just to pile it on offensively here against the Nationals. A lot of work to be done if the Nationals want to come back in this contest. Face off one for the Maroons, but it'll be sent down. Now picked up by, just out of reach of Cunningham and we'll see another icing come. All the way down into, Nash, into the Maroons territory off the icing. So the Nationals will get a chance here with a offensive zone start. Chard wins the face off. Bowers tries to get a piece of it. In tight to Chard again. Down low. Burge can't get a piece of it. Burge picks it up again. Rise again back to Chard. Up to the blue line. Look good. He'll dish it out. Gets it out of the zone. Sent back into the offensive zone by McGowan. Now comes out the other way. All the way down to Barry. Aiden Barry. He hands that off to Noah Arsenal. Back to McGowan. Up to Burge. Burge will lead the rush the other way. Nationals pulling for a change. Tori Elba out there now. He's got to just bow for the puck in the corner as he waits for support. Over to Julian. 
Julian takes a shot from the blue line. Tori Alba gets a piece of it in front of the net, but that one just slides wide. Deacon Holmes tries to put it in out front. Here come the Maroons the other way. Look good. He gets hit into the wall by Holmes. Picked up now by Tori Alba. He's got Wood with him. Tori Alba walks in. He puts a puck on net. Loose puck out front. Picked up again now by Spence, and he'll clear the zone. All the way down to the Nationals territory. Pace Roth will pick it up. Now to Deacon Holmes. Holmes will move the puck. Brings it across the red line. He'll just dump it in. Nationals try to chase after it. Backick will pick it up. He'll send it back the other way. Just a little too much juice on that one. So we will have a icing and a faceoff in the offensive zone. It seems a little bit of a slow start to the third period. You can tell both teams are tired, but this is where you need to kick it into high gear, especially for the Nationals being down three goals. They have trained all year for this. So it's time to get those feet moving and get some energy in them. Ray and tight. Beaupre tries to get a piece of it. That one just flies, flies to the side of the net. Griffiths tries to hold the line. Picked up and brought the other way. Here comes Brown. Waiting for support, cycles back, now throws it into the corner. Clark tries to pick it up, stolen off his stick. Down low again, Nichols. He can't get a hold of it, stolen again by the Maroons. Brown right out front, bouncing puck. Barry can't quite get a hold of it, but it'll be picked up by Beaupre. Beaupre, pass intended for Sanavi. Sanavi wasn't expecting it, so just bounced lightly into neutral ice. Pass by Grant, picked off by Beaupre. Diving play there by Paranuzzi denies the Nationals the attack in the attacking play. Play gets whistled down. This is the Nationals. Time to shine. They want to get a goal early off in this third period to get the momentum up to get them those next two goals to make this a tie game. Otherwise, their season will come to a close with 17 minutes left in the third period. Nationals going to hope to replicate exactly what the Maroons did last night. Nationals were up three. The Maroons were up. Sorry, the Nationals were up three goals going into the third period last night. Maroons come back, tie it, and win it in the third. Nationals hoping to do the same here. Puck gets right to the blue line, capped in by Whaley. Now thrown down into the corner. Can't quite get past the Nationals defenders. Into the corner, Monroe circles back, looking for that outlet pass. Gets it over to Beaupre. Beaupre ends up backing into Whaley, so he can't get a piece of it, but it'll go off a piece of a Maroons player, so the Nationals will get a change. Lead pass intended for Miller. Miller will just touch it up and send it into Nationals territory. Miller down low. He gets a piece of the puck. Has to battle off two Nationals players, and will, the Nationals will draw a power play. Chard over to McGowan. Up the wall. Over to Burge. Burge tries to get it out. And the whistle will go. Burge a little questioning because the Maroons did not have possession of the puck. They seemed a little hesitant to kind of move the puck. They stopped for a second. Didn't really quite generate what was going on. What they should have done is they need to be quicker to the puck there. Move that puck while they have that opportunity where the Maroons can't touch it. And pass off each other like you know they do so well. Just great work down low by Lucas Char. Keeps his feet moving and draws the penalty. So the Maroons will try to clear the puck, and that one just goes straight off the helmet of one of the Maroons players on the bench. And so we'll just reset once again in the, uh, to the left-hand side of the cone. We can notice here they're putting Bowers on the left-hand side because they know he's a goal scorer and he's quick to the puck off the faceoff. Hopefully, Shard winning it to Bowers and Bowers getting a shot on that. Shard right now, Shard and finds it now into the back of the net. Lucas Shard. National strike again, down 5-3. Julian, looks like Julian just snuck in there, maybe off a skate or a back of a stick, just the side of the opponent's skate. He didn't have too much to work with there. The Nationals are up, back, got their momentum, and ready to roll through this last 15 minutes of the third period. I don't, I, Jacob Julian didn't even get a piece of that one as Char just tries to clear it up to Julian in front of the net. Bounces off a couple Maroons players and off of DeConing and finds its way in the net. 
So Lucas Chard gets on the board tonight, and the Nationals now down two, and a missed call as the Nationals break in the offensive zone again. Right out front, another chance. DeConing has to make a hard save from the point. Puck gets out, sent down the length of the ice, and it will be icing. So the momentum back on the side of the Nationals. It's like night and day. When momentum is on the national side, they take complete control over this game. And we've seen a little bit of back and forth recently in the start of the third period. And now after that, Nationals just scored that goal. They have the momentum back in their hands, and they're excited, and they're ready to go. Face off down low. Julian can't quite get a hold of it. Galinsky does a great job winning that draw. But not enough on the puck as that one gets cleared out by Spence into the netting. So we will reset once again. But the Maroons this time will be able to get their fresh set of penalty killers on the ice. Some fresh legs on the ice regardless. Back to the point. Pace Rock. He picks it up. Tate takes to take a shot. That one goes off a leg and just over the net. Picked up now by Denver. Denver's pass hits the boards high and that will clear the ice all the way down. Pace Roth in his own zone. Cycles back and dodges his fancy. Just up to uh, Tori Alba. Now over to Julian. Julian across the blue line. Puck gets sent back into neutral ice. Pace really starting to pick up now. Pace Roth banks it off the boards. Gets it off to Wood. Wood can't get it out as we'll get blown down again. This time we'll go for a hand pass. We can see Lucas Fancy out there definitely stirring up the pot a bit from the Nationals, trying to throw them off their momentum as he is one Maroons player who stands out and the Nationals know when he's on the ice because he gets under their skin for sure. He's done a pretty good job of that throughout the entire series, drawing many, many penalties by just getting the Nationals to cross that line a little too much. Shot from Deacon Holmes, that just gets an awkward bounce and almost catches DeConing off balance. Maroons will try to break it out. Paranuzzi gets it into neutral ice. Graham can't get a piece of it. Brown will. He walks in. He takes a shot from distance. That hits a leg and then will clear the, and go out of play. The national shot totaling 19, where the Maroons are sitting at 34 shots on goal. The good thing for the Nationals here is DeConing hasn't seen a lot of action, so with that third goal, they caught him a bit off guard, and he wasn't able to move the puck necessarily where he wanted to. And just as we saw there again with Deacon Holmes' shot, he was caught on the other side of the net when the puck was on the right side of the net. Let's see a change in the face-off circle as the Bowers oh. comes in as Char gets kicked out. Ice pass gets tipped by Griffiths and will go out of play. We're seeing a lot of pucks fly out of play, a lot of tips here tonight. Well, it's coming off the stick your own defenseman, though. You're not too complaining about it because that at least means that play gets nullified. You get a chance to win another faceoff. Uh, unfortunately for the Nationals, as they continue just to get beat in the faceoff dot relentlessly by this Maroons team. Chart across the blue line over to Bowers. Bowers takes a shot. That one goes off a stick of Whaley and out of play. Some great active sticks down low by the Maroons defense. And we will reset again in the Maroons territory this time. The Maroons getting some fresh legs on the ice. The Nationals have done a really good job of moving the puck really well. They know where each other is going to be before they're even there. And that is an advantage that they have used throughout their series. Face off one by the Maroons. They'll clear the zone. Picked up by Thomas Monroe. Monroe has to circle back. Has the good right on top of him. Gets it over to, to, over to Griffiths. Griffiths, he'll carry it out. That goes off a leg. Still bouncing puck. Stolen by Cunningham. Cross the blue line. He takes a shot. That goes off a leg and out of play once again. That's With, the sixth or seventh out of play in the yeah, last Yeah, I was just going to say. Within the past, like I would say, minute probably, we've had three pucks fly out of bounds. Uh, souvenirs for any of the fans that are just <laughs> The Maroons or fans might want to take that puck home with them. Face off now to the left hand side of Aiden Berry. Galinsky gets kicked out. Look good, will come in. Face off one by the Nationals, picked up now by Noah Arsenault. Arsenal, breakout pass, gets the into neutral ice, all picked out of mid-air by backing. 
Down to Lagood. Stolen by the Nationals. Beaupre turns it the other way. Cross ice pass gets it over to Sandivy. Sandivy can't quite handle the pass. As the puck is turned over again. Just a little out of reach now. Picked up by Nichols. 13 minutes left here in the period. Puck gets sent off the wall. Picked up by Beaupre. Beaupre just backhands it right on net to DeConing. Given over to Clark. Clark throws it up the wall to Cunningham. Sent back the other way quickly. Onto the stick of Beaupre. Beaupre over to Sanabee. Sanabee walks in. He takes a shot. Blockered away by DeConing on one of the best saves he's had to make. Puck gets thrown off the wall. French storming in. Over skates the puck just a little bit. Brought up by Cunningham. Gervais can't handle the pass. Diving play down low. Gets the puck sent behind the net. Picked up by Holmes. Holmes throws it up the wall. Spence tries to keep it in. Stolen by French. French brings it across the blue line. Waits for support. Finds it in Vanderzov. Vanderzov, nice little play as he tries to dipsy doodle his way in and across the blue line. Brought back the other way by Miller. Now on the stick of Deacon Holmes. Holmes circles back. Waiting for the Nationals to finish a setup. Holmes will carry it out himself. Brings it down the left wing side. Makes his way past. Gets it over to Vanderzov. Vanderzov on the front. Loose puck. Can't quite get a hold of it. Denver will clear the zone as that was a loose puck right in the crease, but no one there to make good of it. We've seen the Nationals time and time again have such close opportunities. And as a fan, you're just frustrated and you're so excited. And we've seen that three times. They're really playing with the fans' heartstrings tonight. Another great chance. Good work down low by Detmer as uh, he has had to be sharp a few times as that puck has just found its way loosely floating in the Maroons' crease. And they've had to come up big. Jack Bunker now in the faceoff dot against Gervais. Gervais gets the faceoff win. Picked up now by Spence. Spence will try to clear the puck. Ends up on the Maroons' bench once again. So we'll have yet another faceoff. Nashville switching up, bringing back out the line of Tori Alba with Wood and Julian. 11.51 left here in the second and the third period. 5-3 is your score. Nationals managed to get within two. Bouncing puck goes off the shoulder of the Koning and back out of play again. The Maroons are really going to have to step up their defensive play here to keep the Nationals out of their zone because you can just tell the Nationals are hungry for another goal. Picked up by Monroe. Over to Griffiths. Griffiths takes a shot. Another deflection and out of play again. Nationals trying to do a lot to get those shots in from the blue line, but a lot of active sticks coming from the Maroons to deny those opportunities. Less is more. As we said, they need to simplify their game in order to get those shots on net. Pick up now pick by Fancy. Fancy will try to clear the zone. Julian's right on top of him. Gets some help from Tori Alba. Puck will bounce out over to Griffiths. Griffiths gets muscled off the puck by Welch. Now we're to Fancy. Fancy right in the slot. Tries to get a pass intended for, si for Simons. Brought back out over to Backick. Backick tries to move it the other way. Gets it into neutral ice. Welch will pick it up. It's lost off his stick. Now over to Griffiths. Griffiths. He'll get Brain across the blue line. He takes a shot. Just whips it wide. Monroe. He'll pinch down. Bring it behind the net. Back onto the stick of Welch. Over to Fancy. Fancy lead pass for Brown. Brown across the blue line. He takes a shot, just misses wide. Back the other way. Tori Alba tries to stick up Graham. Back into sight. Char tries to walk right through the middle. Graham bouncing puck. Gets into the neutral ice. Stolen by Burridge. Burridge backhand pass. No one there. Stolen again by Paranuzzi. Across the blue line by Brown. Brown tries to move it to the front of the net. Gat gets stolen. Back to the blue line. Zabo keeps it in. Onto the stick of Burridge. Burridge, long saucer pass intended for Bowers. Just out of his reach, picked up by Whaley. Whaley tries to break it out. Gets to the hash, gets to the top of the circle, but can't clear the zone. Now to Paranuzzi. Paranuzzi floats into neutral ice. Turn the other way by Arsenault. Arsenault, off a leg. Turns back again. 
Arsenault looking for that outlet pass. Still waits, gets to the red line and will just dump it in, but not far enough across. So we'll get a little for icing and all the way back down into Nationals territory. We didn't see any team really have good control of the puck there. It was a bouncing puck moving back and forth, a real battle for both teams trying to gain control of the puck and get some movement going one way down the ice. We saw a lot of play in the neutral zone. Face off to the right-hand side of Aiden Berry. Chard will get kicked out. Burge will come in and take the draw. Face off win by Galinsky. Back to the blue line. Clark can't handle it. Ends up in. Gets, gets dumped back into national territory. Puck gets thrown hard around the boards. Aggressive play by the Maroons will get back on their sticks. Nationals just clear it into neutral ice again. Bouncing puck picked up by Clark. Sent back the other way by Bowers. Bowers right on top of it. He gets a piece of it. Bowers right in the slot. Nichols tries to get a hold of it. He does. Puts it out front. No one there. Shot from Arsenault. That one just goes wide. McGowan, he'll try to keep it into the blue line. Gets it past Cunningham. Nichols throws it bet, throws it down low. Just out of reach of Burridge. Picked up again. Spence can't handle it. Delinsky will find it on the half wall. He'll move it out. Right onto the stick of Owen McGowan. McGowan waits till the team clears. Brings it across the blue line. He'll drive the net right down low again. McGowan holding on. Still looking for that pass. Cycles back. Throws it right down to the slot. Beaupre finds it. Beaupre backhand right up front. Just on the stick of Sanity, but he can't bury it. Deconing flopping all over his net, but the Nationals can't get anything to go. Breakout pass off to toe, off to Beaupre. Beaupre dumps it in. Picked up now by Zabo. Zabo will try to bring it out. Circles back at the top of his own circle. Over to Sanity. Nationals resetting again. Deacon Holmes. Picked up by, by Holmes. Holmes over to Pace Rock. Over to Sanity. Sanity tries to get it in. Gets to the Sabo. Pace Roth, he gets knocked down to the play. Chard will try to get it in. Chard still can't get a piece of it. Over to Bowers. Bowers, cross ice pass, nobody there. Spence gets a piece of it. Burge on there now. Burge, cross ice to Bowers. Bowers across the blue line. Throws it right in the slot as he had Chard streaking down the middle, but just a little too far ahead. The Nationals are having so many close chances throughout this entire game. It's just making fans almost want to rip their ha hair out. We saw Beaupre there just pass it over and such a close opportunity. Deconing just hanging in there by a thread. Right down low, Bowers, he tries to take a shot. That gets blocked. Puck will stay in. Kept in at the blue line by Griffiths. Sent back the other way. Puck does clear the zone. Over to Chard. Chard brings it across the blue line. Dishes it over to Bowers. Bouncing puck can't be handled. Back the other way. Here come the Maroons. Across the blue line, walking in. Over to Fancy. Fancy takes a shot. Beautiful glove save by Barry. We're seeing just there on that odd man rush by the Maroons. The Nationals not back checking as hard as you would like them to see. We're seeing Birch come in and just maybe their speed, they're maybe saving some energy for the last few minutes, but they don't have any time to save any energy. They have to put everything that they have out on this ice. Monroe tries to clear it out. Fancy will steal the puck. Set back behind the net, picked up again by Simons. Back, back on the Nationals, sticks of the Nationals. Puck will clear the zone. Fancy will tries to send it right back in. Gets pinned along the boards. Two Nationals, three, three Nationals, two Maroons. Ends up on the stick of wood. Now to Monroe. Monroe waiting, trying to find that pass. Now gets over to Wood. Wood's got Tori Alba with him. Over Tori Alba, shoots and scores! Daniel Tori Alba brings the Nationals within one. What an exciting game to watch. Daniel Torrealba putting up two points on the board for the London Nationals this game, bringing them closer than ever with a one goal differential with just under seven minutes left. What an exciting game to watch. The Nationals have clawed their way back into this game and they're not giving up. It's just not yet. over yet. 
Nationals down 4 nothing at one point have now closed the gap to 5-4. What an amazing character showing game for this team. Puck out neutralized. Spence, he'll just dump it back into the Maroons in the National territory. You can tell the momentum is all on the national side. The Maroons are on their back foot on the back foot right now. And the Nationals just need to keep pushing if they want to try a tire. McGowan just backs it up, goes off a stick and out of play. So we'll reset once again. The nerves have to be kicking in, but they've been training for this all season. Dave Mastos, I can assure you, is keeping his team calm and focused. Moving in with one goal differential with six minutes and just under 30 seconds left in this game. Shots totaling 26 for the Nationals, 36 for the Maroons. The Nationals are getting those shots that they need, and it's showing. Face off one by the Nationals. Lucas Char brings it across the blue line. Bucket set back down in national territory. McGowan over to Arsenal. Arsenal, long pass intended for Chard. Chard just a little bit across the blue line. So it will go for offside. As the Nationals had a beautiful chance at that home run pass. If Chard was a stride back, that would have been a clear cut breakaway. That would have been, could have possibly generated into a three on two, giving the Nationals a good opportunity to dominate the Maroons in their own zone. Moving back into the Nationals, and Jacob Julian taking the face off. Face off one by the Maroons, back to the point. Whaley takes a shot on net. Barry has to bobble it, but finds the puck in the end and holds on. You can see the Nationals just throwing everything, all the bodies that they have. We saw Tori Alba throw his body in front of the puck there. He didn't quite get hit by the defenseman, but you can see the dedication and the character, and they want to win this game so bad. Face off from the left hand side of Abe Barry. Won by the Nationals. McGowan brings it around into the corner. Fancy can't make a play on it. Paranuzzi now behind the net. And Simons, he tries to get it out. Arsenal throws it around. No one there. Fancy will pick it up, send it behind the net again. Arsenal, first one on it. Stolen again by, by Simons. Back out front. Fancy tries to get a piece of it. Loose puck between a bunch of legs. Arsenal, he'll get a piece of it. Banks it off the wall just a little too high, and he'll catch the netting and go out of play. We can see the pucks bouncing a lot back and forth. The last thing you want as the London Nationals is for there to be a loose puck in Barry's house. London defensemen are going to have to bear down and move bodies and pucks out of their zone. Face-off win. Just gets scrum now, ends up on the stick of the Nationals. Good physicality by them down low. Puck gets flipped into the into the Maroons territory. Back it right on top of it. Aggressive play by Char. Puts it out front. Bird can't get a hold of it. On the stick of Pace Roth. He takes a shot. That one gets blocked. Sent back the other way. Pace Roth does a good job running a screen as Deacon Holmes picks up the puck. Over to Char. Now back to Holmes. Holmes walks in. He has all kinds of guys. Deacon Holmes scores! Tie game! Deacon Holmes! What an unreal goal by Deacon Holmes. You can tell he's been wanting this the entire game. He's been a force to be reckoned with. He's been a key defenseman, holding up bodies, knocking the Maroons down throughout this entire series. And he put one on the board, and a very important one to note on the board for the London Nationals. Tie tie. 5-5 five, five game with five minutes left in the third period. Not the guy you expected to come out here as the Nationals heavy hitting shut down defenseman dances his way through four Maroons players to tie the game at five. I would if you had me picking who would tie the game I would Deacon Holmes would have probably been one of my last three guys to pick. Yeah what a surprising and awesome way to tie up the game possibly could have been their last season fans are excited you can tell the maroons are cheering the nationals are cheering and overall just an exciting game to watch Nats fans coming alive now the go Nats go chance echoing through the western fair sports center as the nationals continue to try to apply the pressure courage down low puck comes out picked up now by spence spence cross ice 
Now gets sent in. Barry just lightly throws it into the corner. Nashals coming back the other way. McGowan across the blue line. Full head of steam. Dumps it by Zabo. Goes to try to get to it himself. Down low again. Puck still loose. McGowan will try to pick it up. Bowling for it now. Beaupre, he comes away and throws it up front. No one there. Whaley will pick it up. 3.50 left here in the third period. Stolen back by the Maroons. Now onto the stick of Zabo. Zabo, he'll just dump it in across the blue line and into the offensive zone. Fancy down low. Stolen by the Nationals. Monroe tries to dish it out. Get, tries to get it to Sanity. That gets blocked again. Down low. Played by Welch. Stolen again. Loose puck still. Nobody managed to get any kind of meaningful possession. Whaley takes a shot. Another shot on net. Barry, beautiful save as he'll hang on. The London Nationals are giving the Chatham Maroons a little bit of a taste of their own medicine from last night. They have come back from a four-goal deficit in the first period. What an unreal way to play. This has been a series of ups and downs. No one knows what to predict in this series as we've seen about pretty much everything you can imagine so far in just five games. Face off one, plucked up by the Nationals. Wood down low, he's battling with Cunningham. Trying to come away with the puck. Still loose along the wall, in the, along the wall. Down in the corner now. Look good, he gets a piece of it. Just throws it behind the net. Arsenault's on top of it. He tries to move it up the wall. Gets it to the blue line. Whaley keeps it in. Puck gets thrown to the open wing. Picked up by Wood. Now down to Torrealba. Torrealba all by himself. Trying to hold onto the puck. Waiting for support. Manage to get it through. Still battling for it as he gets knocked down. Finds it on his feet. Tries to get it to Julian right in the slot. Ends up just in, out of reach of Jacob Julian. Some great individual effort there by Daniel Torrealba. Puck down low again. Arsenal. He'll pick it up. Nationals bringing out the big line again. Up the wall to Bowers. Bowers just gets it by but can't quite get it into the offensive zone. Spence will turn it back the other way over to Fancy. Fancy across the blue line. Great defensive work by Arsenal to send it back the other way. Stolen again. Simons across the blue line. Pass gets blocked by Holmes. Holmes throws a big hit in the corner. Play Ray of the blue line, trying to get it out. Burge can't quite get a hold of it. Arsenal will. Arsenal on the end of a long shift. Puck gets sent down into the, into the Maroons' territory. DeConing comes out and plays it. Puck comes all the way out. Picked up now by Thomas Monroe. Monroe over to Deacon Holmes. Holmes just throws that puck lightly through the air. Picked up by Char, but Char can't handle it. Now we're to Fancy. Or Brown. Brown brings it in. He takes a shot. Barry with a nice save. Sent back out in neutral ice. Spence cross ice over to back it. Back it can't handle the pass. Cross ice to Fancy now. Fancy across the blue line. He walks in over to Brown. Brown, beautiful chance. Glove saved by Barry. Barry in that glove. Two amazing, crucial glove saves by Barry. He is having a good game tonight. Barry has found his found his game here in the third. Calm, cool, collected. Been fantastic throughout the entire third period here for the London Nationals. Absolutely. He makes it look easy. Thomas Monroe now behind the net. He'll bring it out. Sends it up. Lead pass. And on the stick of Wood. Wood can't quite handle it. Going back the other way. Ends up on the stick of Paranuzzi. Back the other way comes Graham. Last minute of play here in the third. Puck comes out right onto the glove of Barry, and he'll hang on. You can feel the tension in this building right now, can't you, Kyle? It's just super tense. You can tell both fans are on their toes, just waiting for what both teams are going to do next. Crowds on the edge of their seats. 5-5 five, five in a do-or-die game here for the London Nationals. Face off one by the Maroons. Over to Whaley. Whaley, he tries to take a shot. That gets blocked. And bounces right onto Barry. And he just scoops it up and says, none of that. Barry in that glove in the last three saves has, he's just been on it. He's utilizing that glove to his advantage. Looks like the Nationals are going to be having a fresh set of legs here. 
another face-off, this time won again by the Maroons. Villa ends up behind the men of the Nationals. McGowan, he banks it over to, over to Burridge. Burridge gets it out, dumps it into the Maroons' territory. Quick play the other, play, other way by Clark. Up to Fancy, Fancy just throws it into the Nationals' territory. Lucas Chard, he'll pick it up. Throws it cross ice to, McGow to Monroe. Monroe across the blue line. He'll move it down low, right out front, takes a shot in tight, and DeConey has to make the save. Ryland Bowers right in tight. One of the most dangerous guys on the ice for the Nationals. I wonder who Dave Massos is going to have out here. Looks like it's going to be... The Tori Alba line. Tori Alba line, Jacob Julian. And Riley Wood. Julian down low, wins the face off, picked up, back to the point. Monroe will just dump it down low, 10 seconds left here. Kept in by McGowan, he'll throw it down to Toriyama. Toriyama takes a hit by Galinsky, puts it out front, nobody there. Three seconds left, and time is going to expire. We are going to overtime here in game five of the Western Conference semifinals. The Nationals' playoff lives are on the line, and they claw their way back to a tie game. We will be right back here on Rogers TV. Hi, my name is Mike Arsenault. I'm a morning show host and digital broadcast journalist at Chorus Entertainment. What is the hardest part about being a parent? Uh, having kids. And I became a volunteer at Rogers TV London way back in 2012. I always wanted to work in the broadcast industry, but I didn't have the educational background, so I figured Rogers TV was the best way for me to get my foot in the door to the uh, media broadcast industry. If you're willing to uh, put the time in, good things will happen and uh, start early. I didn't start getting paid to be on television until I was 28, started volunteering, I think around 22 or 23. But if I had the educational background in uh, either journalism or media, I would have been able to start my career just a little bit quicker. It was our 35th anniversary. To celebrate, we were on our way to Mama Rosie's, where we had our first date. That's when we heard coming from the radio. So we stopped and listened. It helped us get to safety. So when I think of, I think of our anniversary, because now we have even more to celebrate. Arby's Nationals Hockey on Rogers TV, then join the crew. Volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. Visit rogerstv.com slash volunteer to sign up. Now, back earlier in the season, we did manage to catch up with Coach Dave Mastos, and um, joining a, joining a then first place team mid-season isn't, isn't common, and that was the appeal for Coach Dave Mastos. To me, I just looked at it like a challenge, something that I've never been faced with before. And so, you know, at Nats fans, I, I, can't, I can't promise you anything. Like, that's just not the, the right thing to do. Um, do I feel comfortable with our team and our progression right now? I, I actually do. But, yeah, I mean, you, lo you lose a guy like Zach Power, which, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, you, like Mary Lemieux or Wayne Gretzky walking out of their team. Like, it's hard to replace that. So the challenge for me is kind of what excited me. You know, there was there was turbulence. There was a little bit of you know movement and shifts at different times. Not really common. Um, so yeah, I just went to bed one night. I'm like, this might be one of those things that actually, like, if I attack this one and we actually do it the right way, um, I come out better. I come out as as a better coach. I come out as a better mentor for you know the age bracket that I'm coaching. So. It, it was almost like an appealing challenge for me. For me, it's, it, it's consistency. Like that, that's just it. I, like it's, it's, it's really odd to have training camp in February. Like that, that, that and, but again, that was the appealing challenge for me, right? It's like, we got training camp in February. 
how, how am I going to get these guys to buy into a different four check neutral zone, D zone? Uh, how am I going to win these guys over? That was the biggest challenge. So um, we've, we've had a little bit of turbulence. You know, we went, went on a really good run, then we hit a bit of a rut, which I expected. Um, so I, I just think the expectations for me, um, you know, going into it, I just, I just want to see consistency. I want them to understand the style of play that we're going for. Uh, and if they can, I guess, duplicate that on, on a regular basis, um, they're, they've got a better chance than not because we have a good team. I know that, you know, we're, we're, we're basically balanced in every position where these guys have gone through a lot and there's been a lot of change. And so for me, it was just, let's just get a balance and let them get to know me. I incorporated so much almost to a point where I was worried that it would be information overload, but it had to be done because of our timing. That's, that's just what it was. You know, that's the hand that we've all been dealt and that's what we, we went with, but I think I'm, I'm happy. Like I'm really happy because I, I see our team right now and their progression going just upwards. And that's all I cared about. You know, I want to make these athletes better. I want them, I want them to feel good. I want them to feel comfortable with their style of play. And I want them to believe that they can win because um, again, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know the variables that are going to come into play. You know, Barry signs in London, like, you know, <laughs> like who, you just don't know these things, but they're all for good reasons. Uh, but, you know, when Barry, Barry signs in London, it alters the way that the, your, your mind operates when you go to bed at night, you know, we're going to lose them. How long are we going to lose them for? And but it's all for good reasons. But the, those are the challenges. That's, those are the obstacles that you're, you're faced with. And um, I just like to be prepared to a point where it's almost overkill. Dave Massos' preparedness has been crucial here as the Nationals managed to claw their way back from 4 nothing to tie this game 5-5 as we get set for overtime. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Mario Elia, and I'm the host of a new show here on Rogers TV that we're calling Keeping London Healthy with Dr. Mario. So tune in Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. and we'll see you then. Heart and Home Original Series. Wind Calls the Heart returns with an all new season. Surprise! Constable, I wrote this as a love letter to my son and to everyone else in this town. I can't quite outrun my past. Fire! We're on the threshold of a new era here. Wind Calls the Heart, Season 9. It's about sharing and caring. It's about doing and belonging. It's about living life to its fullest. And it's about laughing out loud. We are L'Arche Canada, and we're about witnessing and sharing the gifts of all people. Learn more about us today. Join us for the Learners Healthcare Champions Virtual Awards Gala on April 21st at 7 p.m. as we reveal our 2022 Healthcare Champions Award recipients. Register now at healthcarechampions.learners.ca. Watch, play, and win every Monday night at 8 p.m. with Optimus TV Bingo on Rogers TV. Cards are available at multiple London locations and are good for all three games. Weekly jackpots total $3,000. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center. Uh, normally, this is the Paul Duarte and Associates Nationals post-game show, and it very well looked like that was going to be the case after 40 minutes of play. Nationals come alive in the third, scoring four goals and just tying this game. Yeah, an unreal effort from the Nationals in that third period. You could tell they wanted it, and they clawed their way back after opportunity after opportunity. You could tell the building completely changed as the Nationals gained momentum over the Maroons in the third period. Absolutely just phenomenal play by the Nationals. That determination. This goal right here, as, as I said uh, during the broadcast, I would not have been able to pick Deacon Holmes as the goal scorer um, if you asked me to name 10 players. Uh, Julian, Torrealba, Holmes. Torrealba his first, Holmes his first. 
And Julian, his second of the game, seventh of the playoffs, as the Nationals come up big and get the lead in shots for the period, 13 to 10 in that in the third period. So a huge comeback game, monumental work by the Nationals, and just smothered the Maroons at every turn throughout that third period. And for the first five minutes or so, it looked like it was pretty much dead even. No team really had the advantage for that first five minutes or so. Yeah, the puck was bouncing back and forth from both teams. We saw a lot of pucks go out of play. We saw a lot of play in the neutral zone. Both teams were kind of just itching to get that puck, gain that puck control, and it was a battle for a bit, and the Nationals won that battle as they've been putting a lot of pressure on the Maroons and getting those shots on net, and their shots went up quite significantly in the third period. 13 shots in the period, 10 saves made by Nolan DeCone and now a lot that could have been a lot worse as some of those saves he had to make were had to be like 10 bell saves because the puck's flying through the crease nationals get an extra stick on here this game is over and we're heading to chatham on friday absolutely at any point in the game deconing i would say he got pretty lucky like the nationals had so many opportunities to get the puck in that net just one if the puck just moved a different way just slightly, this could be a totally different game. But the Nationals have continuously been putting in that effort and have come to play as they've been training for this all season. And they've showed it and they put it out on the ice tonight. Absolutely. And then we wouldn't get here uh, where we are right now if it wasn't for the guy in the between the pipes on the other side. Aiden Barry, phenomenal effort for the Nationals. Comes in in relief of Owen Flores after the first and lets in that first goal right off the bat, but has been lights out pretty much the rest of the way and made 10 huge saves for the Nationals in the third. Yeah, absolutely. We've seen a lot of glove action from Barry near the end of the third period saving Three glove saves, absolutely phenomenal work from Barry. You can tell he's focused, he's in the zone, and he is not letting the season end for the Nationals here tonight. Yeah, absolutely fantastic work from Barry. Exactly what you expected of him. Uh, for a couple games throughout the right, throughout this series, he hasn't looked normally what we expected of him, um, but uh, tonight basically looks like what we saw of him throughout the entire regular season and that is one of the best if not the best goalie in the western conference and the nationals are going to need more of that as they get ready for overtime still their season on the line here score five five hi everyone my name's ranger m I love to knowledge share, and that's just what I'm going to do with you. So come on, let's go learn with Ranger M. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. Canada is a multicultural country, and I know that there are a lot of people like me out there. We need a sport to do our job in our native language. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. You know why. Operation Smile, alongside our medical volunteers, provides safe cleft surgery to children free of charge thanks to generous donors like you. That was until we fell into a pandemic. If you only knew what I'm going By December, tens of thousands more children will be waiting for surgery. Please help us keep our promise and deliver smiles to children in need when surgeries resume. I'm Jennifer Slay, the host of What's Up London. Join me each week as I meet Londoners who are doing extraordinary things and helping to make the city a better place to live. Watch What's Up London Mondays only on Rogers TV. On the season finale of London Lights, Dan welcomes David Shore, the creator of the TV show House. They talk about growing up in London and how David went from a lawyer to a TV writer and producer. Tune in Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Looking at our Paul Duarte and Associates uh, shots on goal uh, after the third period. 13 to 10 are your tolls for the London Nationals and 42 28 overall in favor of the Chatham Maroons. But the score stands at 5 5. Now, looking at our next contest, it was, will be Saturday night, if, if necessary, game seven. 
everything on the line if the Nationals manage to claw their way back in. They need to win tonight and then Friday night in Chatham if we are to see another contest here at the Western Fair Sports Centre. And with that, we will get ready for, uh, our, for the overtime after this. some talk about this and it's going to materialize here. He scores! Wow! How do you stop that? <laughs> you know, between the legs, holy score! Damn the highlight field goal! Oh! And what is going on here? First a shot, he scores! What a shot! Shot score! Ladies and gentlemen, give that man some pass. The OHL playoffs continue on Rogers TV. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives. We change lives. I saw a competitor tonight, and I can't wait to break his face. Charles Oliveira is the most technical guy in the game. He has the most submissions in the history of the sport. But Justin Gaethje is fearless. He just destroys everything in his path. This is a rematch. They're going to go right out one another, and I can't wait for it. Oh, what a fight. Buckle your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen. Do you enjoy watching Arby's Nationals Hockey on Rogers TV? Then join the crew. Volunteers learn the skills needed to put on a show, including camera, audio, graphics, and more. Visit rogerstv.com slash volunteer to sign up. Back here at the Western Fair Sports Center, we're taking a look at the playoff point leaders coming into tonight's game, um, as there is three of them in the uh, in this tonight's game. Jeff Burridge on there, Ryland Bowers for Vaughn and Nationals. Um, they've been the huge offensive points for the team. And then uh, number two on that list right there is Connor Paranuzzi, who has been absolutely fantastic. Um, and just not surprising that we're seeing that from those guys um, so far. Um, David Brown, the other mentioned on there, probably the Chatham Maroons. Um, now, this is all before tonight. Um, Brown, Burridge, and Paranuzzi all with one point tonight. So you can add those on top. Doesn't really change too much. Uh, does put uh, Burge into a solidified number four spot, um, but that's about it. Uh, still, you can see that these two teams come into this playoffs with high offense, and they really deliver. They do deliver. Each team has goal scorers, and they know how to score their goals. And though every game in the series has been fairly high scoring, especially starting off. With that first game with eight goals, eight to two, you know, you didn't think you would be here tonight after watching that first game with London and Chatham. London absolutely dominating. And now here, London is fighting for their life in a 5-5 tie going into overtime. Both teams back on the benches now. Aiden Barry getting set to go back in between the pipes for the Nationals. Um, one thing we can see that has been a big aspect throughout this game has been special teams. Power play goals in particular, we've seen quite a few of them. That's mainly how the Maroons have got the lead in this game before the Nationals tied it up. Yeah, absolutely. The Nationals are going to have to play a discipline overtime to avoid any giving the Chatham Maroons any special teams because they know that they are very good on their special teams. So, fingers crossed, this stays an even overtime and is a good continuation of the series. Dylan Golinski, you saw there scoring that last goal. Uh, he's been a big key part for the Maroons throughout the uh, this entire series and uh, has been a big aspect. Should be going forward tonight, too. Absolutely. Golinski leads the GOJHL players with three game-winning goals in playoffs. So the Nationals are going to have to watch out for him, and he's going to have a target on his back going into this overtime. Both teams getting that long change here as we switch ends once again. 
So Nationals coming out big with that top line. Maroons answering with their same thing as well. So expect some action right off the bat as we get set here for puck drop overtime here at the Western Fair Sports Center. Face off one by Lucas Chard. Comes all the way down, picked up now by McGowan. McGowan throws it hard off the board, gets to the blue line, still kept in. Now clears the zone. Picked up by Whaley. Whaley, he'll circle back. Cross ice pass over to Simon. Simons can't handle the pass, just out of his reach. So it will go for an icing and sent down in the Blues territory. You can only imagine what's going through the Nationals' head, specifically Barry, as you can kind of see him just keeping himself together, calming himself down in his net, and hoping that the Nationals came to play in this overtime. It's going to be a lot of light on to Koning as well, as uh, he started out really solid, ended up falling a bit apart a bit in the third period. Um, you're going to have to hope he bounces back strong in the overtime. Yeah, when you don't get that rubber bouncing off your pads as much, it, it leaves room for mistakes and errors because you're not in the game as much as you'd like to be. Shot on net of DeConing makes the save. Now brought out the other way. Two on one possibility coming here the other way. Fancy across the blue line. He brings it in. He has to circle back. Back to the blue line. Whaley, he takes a shot. That gets blocked. Here come the Nationals the other way. Lucas Chard, he's got Burge with him. Chard over to Burge. Burge brings it in. What a save by DeConing. And he has to hang on as the game on the line. What a save. Bowers taking one for the team there. He's just blocked that shot off of his hand as giving his teammates the opportunity to go down and get a sh scoring opportunity on Duke Koning. I hope Bowers is okay. Looks like he got took one off the hand. Face off now in the e Nerd zone. Julian does a great job winning that. Tori Alba tries to play it down low. Picked up again by the Maroons as they'll break it out. Across the blue line, stolen by Deacon Holmes. Deacon Holmes, the reason we got here. Scored the game-tying goal. Sends it cross ice. Wood tries to play it in the corner. He gets stopped up, kept in at the blue line. Sent back down low again. Nichols, he's on top of the puck. Gets thrown ahead of him. Tori Alba hustles in. He steals it right back. And now onto the stick of Backick. Backick moves it to the blue line. Puck does come out. Stolen back by Brown. The Maroons bring it across the blue line, but will be offside. The Nationals get a chance to regroup and move it out. Puck sent down the length of the ice. Just out of reach. Picked up again by the, by the Nationals. Back to the blue line. Over to Monroe. Monroe tries to put it down low. Banks it off the back wall. Back it. Fouling in there for the puck. Picked up again by the Nationals. Puck comes right out. Just out of reach of Thomas Monroe. Monroe holds the blue line. He takes a shot. That one just bounces wide again. Out of reach of Ryland Bowers. Bowers finds it. He puts a backhand down into the corner. Picked up and brought out into the offensive zone by the Maroons as they go off for a change. Nashville's going to try to quickly jump right back on top of him. Bowers across the blue line. Puck gets blocked by Cunningham. Brought back out the other way. Now into the Maroons' territory, Nashville's territory again. Monroe brings it out. Picked up now by Burge. Burge drop pass, walking in. Trying to get a move in tight as Char, but Allen's falls off his stick. Great play by Zabo. We're seeing that great patience with the puck from Burge again in this overtime. Pace Roth, he'll play the puck down low. Banks it off the wall. Can't get it past Galinsky. Well, it finds its way right back on his own stick. Rolls it around him to Thomas Monroe again. Picked up by Char. Char tries to clear the zone. That gets blocked. Sent right back down again. McGowan tries to throw a home run pass. He had Burge at the opposing blue line. Stolen by Galinsky. Galinsky will bring it into the offensive zone. Fancy right on top of Pace Raw. Gets it over to Bowers. Bowers throws it up into the air, and that one just catches the netting, and it will go out of play. We're seeing Chatham's top scorers out here. Galinsky, Fancy, and Simons. Sorry, Welch as well in face-off in the national zone. Face-off now, Welch going head-to-head -head against Jacob Julian. Nice face-off win by the Nationals, picked up now by, by Deacon Holmes. Holmes across the blue line, leads the rush, tries to get it inside, but gets stopped by Backick. Played inside, over to the back to the blue point again, another shot on net, DeConing makes the save. 
the Nationals are moving the puck really fast there. And that's a good thing because they know how to pass the puck and it's phenomenal the way that they are just able to read each other and know where each other is going to be. Every shot here in the game on bated breath as both teams waiting to see who will break the deadlock. Backick just takes that puck, catches the netting high and goes out of play again. So we will reset once again in Maroon's territory. Daniel Torrealba, pair of points already on the night tonight. Will he, does he have more in him? Julian in the faceoff dot. One cleanly by the Maroons, picked up by Spence. Spence off the fancy. Fancy cross ice pass brought the other way by Backick. Gets across the blue line. Welch, long shot from distance. Just ends up right in the bread basket of Barry. We've been seeing the Maroons win a lot of the faceoffs, the majority of the faceoffs. And that's another key thing. If you're winning those battles, you're going to get puck possession, which is a really important and key factor in generating those opportunities for you to break out of your own zone, for you to get your team set up and generate those opportunities to get a shot on it. Nationals coming right back out to the top, to that top line again. They're just running six forwards at this point. Back to the blue line again, kept in by Spence. Back over, stolen off the stick of Graham. Chard lose the stick on the play, just trying to play soccer with it, trying to get it over to somebody to even help. Bowers gets a stripped off his stick. Across the blue line comes Paranuzzi. Now over to over Brown. Brown takes a shot blockered away by Barry. Falls down into the corner. Back to the blue line. Another shot on net. That one just whistles wide. Now to now under the stick of Burge. Burge lead pass intended for Chard just out of his reach. Stolen by Brown. Brown's lead pass picked off by Arsenal. Arsenal brings it back into the offensive zone as he dumps it in as the Nationals go off for a change. Zabo picked off by McGow by Burridge. Burridge can't quite do anything. I don't think he was expecting to block the pass. Cross the blue line come the Maroons. Shot goes in, just deflected wide. Thomas Monroe, he'll bring it back out. Cross the blue line. He walks it in. Just Wade trying to find an open shot. Gets pushed right into the corner. And the puck will go out of play once again as the Nationals get yet another offensive zone faceoff. We're seeing a lot of back and forth, but more so from the Nationals are slightly dominating, not by much, but we're seeing a little bit of spark and energy from them in the Maroon zone. Faceoff won by the Maroons. They just win it back into the corner, sent around hard, and goes back to Nationals territory. McGowan, cross ice over to our, over to and brought back out again. Pace Raw, he'll pick it up. Behind the net. Logan Pace Raw, he'll try to set up here for the Nationals. Across the blue line, dished it over to Sandeby. Sandeby brings it across the blue line, but can't go any farther. The Nationals have to regroup as they're just offside. Galinsky, he'll bring it back the other way for the Maroons. Sandeby right on top of him. Puck gets dumped into the corner. Cunningham tries to play it. Bofrey's there for the Nationals. Bofrey, cross ice, just out of the reach of Sanavi. Sanavi uses his speed, gets on top of it. He'll try to throw it out front. The puck goes high and far into the corner. Bofrey jumps on top, of, on top of Cunningham. He'll collect the puck again. Down low. Bofrey still holding on to it. And we will see a penalty coming here for interference. will be on the Nationals. It'll be Sanity going to the box. A much awkwardly delayed penalty as the Nationals had control of the, the puck and then they finally blew it. Yeah, you just saw that Maroons player down after Sanity hit him and quite wondering what happened. But then just a miss on that call and Sanity in the box. Right down in the corner, McGowan, he'll try to clear the zone. Gets it to the blue line, picked up now by Chard. Chard will bring it out himself. Tries to move it in front, gets it right on net to the Koning, and Koning will just have to hang on as the Nationals penalty killers have been extremely aggressive throughout that third period and into the overtime so far. And it has worked so far, you know they're gonna try to keep it up. That's what they need to do. They can't give the Maroons an inch because if they give them an inch, that gives them time to think and make smart plays with the puck. 
Owen Whaley, he'll bring it across the blue line. Just dumps it down in the offensive zone. Arsenal, Ray on top. It tries to deflect the puck up the boards. Galinsky can't get a hold of it. Back to the blue line again. Whaley, cross ice. Puck gets tipped. Still kept in the offensive zone. Galinsky again. He takes a shot. Barry makes the save. Arsenal throws it up the boards. Gets by. And now we're going to clear the ice and all the way down once again. Whaley's down there to pick it up. Back pass over to Galinsky. Cross ice over to, over to Fancy. Cross the blue line, gets it over to Brown. Brown takes a shot at a sharp angle. Still stays out. Charred right on top of Galinsky again. Puck right in the slot, and it will go, and the whistle goes as the puck is off its moorings. The Maroons not happy and wanted the whistle going a little earlier. Well, the faceoff will happen once again. A minute all gone here in the play, in the power play already. The Nationals are doing a really good job of playing an offensive power play, but they have to be careful when getting down into the maroon zone because they're able to regroup quickly, and that could leave on for a five-on-three on the Nationals' defense. Paranusi the other way, back to the point. Another shot down low, loose puck lines, lines away, and scores! And the Maroons end it in overtime. Paranusi scores! the shock on the face of the Nationals as they come all the way back, but the Maroons end it here in overtime. This is a repeat of the 2008 playoff series between the Nationals and the Maroons. The Maroons reclaiming their victory in playoffs against the Nationals from 2008. A huge victory here for the Chatter Maroons. The first time the Nationals have not made it to the Sutherland Cup, uh, the Western Conference Finals in over six years. A huge loss for the Nationals. A monumental victory here for the Chatter Maroons as they come all the way. They just stun the Nationals here on home ice and win two of three games here at the Western Fair Sports Center to take the Nationals out in five games. I'd like to point out a few of the graduating players on the London Nationals team. Thomas Monroe, Noah Arsenault, Deacon Holmes, Daniel Torrealba, Jeff Burridge, Sam Vanderzom, and Nick Beaupre. All their final game in Junior B playing here for the London Nationals. And uh, also want to give a shout out to the trainer for the London Nationals, uh, Joe Gowers. Um, been with the team a long time. Um, Got to know Joe over the last few years. Great person to know. Uh, there's been a lot of help in any, any things I've needed to know about the team. Um, just a great guy. Um, sad to see him go, but hopefully he has a good job in his future endeavors. The Maroons now will go on to face the winner of the chat of the Leamington Flyers and St. Mary's Lincoln series. That one's still tied at two. So the Maroons will get a chance to rest here and move on as uh, it is a sad and disappointing moment here for the London Nationals coaching staff and team as what they thought was going to be a Southern Cup caliber team comes up short here in the second round. Absolutely, you can see the Maroons fans just cheering on their team as they are so excited that they scored that overtime goal and a well-deserved win for the Maroons here tonight. Just fantastic effort by the Maroons. Come out huge early in the first period here. Just pile it on. The Nationals do a phenomenal job coming back in this contest to force overtime, but just could not get over that last hump off a beautiful play. Ends up on the power play once again. Paranuzzi ends it for the Nationals, or for the Maroons, as they will win the series. Uh, Dave Mastos and company, as you see the last salute here for the Nationals. The end of the 2021-2022 season here at the Western Fair. Never no. easy to go through that, that handshake line. Absolutely. Not the result the Nationals wanted here tonight, but they went out with a bang, they fought back, and they should be very proud of themselves here tonight. You know, the celebrations all over the place for the Chatham Maroons. 
But you know, for them, they know their job is not done yet. Uh, as for the Nationals, had a phenomenal season, uh, finishing second in the Western Conference, had some amazing runs, uh, including a 16-0 start on, the, on home ice here at the Western Fair. Um, always a shame that it has to end and uh, sucks even more when it, when it happens in front of your own fans. Absolutely. Like we said, not the result that they wanted, but they should be incredibly proud of themselves. Finishing second in the season overall, and what a battle in the playoff series. You can see Joe there getting a lot of uh, attention from a lot of the players and a lot of the veterans coming off the ice last there. Vanderzom, Burridge, Arsenault. The Arsenault and Burridge there, so especially two of the cores of this team. Um, one of the top pairing defensemen, your best player, led the entire GOJHL in scoring throughout this regular season. Um, had a phenomenal playoff. Uh, just unfortunate for them that it had to go out this way. Yeah, but overall, great job and phenomenal season by the London Nationals. And with that, that will be it for us here on for the London Nationals. We will be back with the Paul Duarte and Associates Nationals postgame show after this. I'm Matt Chalmers. I'm a VTR op and master control technical director at TSM. I decided to volunteer at Rogers because I was interested in TV as a profession and it seemed like an awesome way to learn and get out and actually experience what the TV world was like. So I got to do uh, did the hockey, baseball, football, and it helped me build relationships and um, understanding people better and being able to work with different personalities a lot easier. If you want to volunteer um, and you think it looks like a fun thing, do it. Just know that you're going to have to put in a lot of work. And um, but that work is very worth it. And it's a very fun time. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. Not everyone trapped by alcohol is an alcoholic. Families and friends are suffering too. Al-Anon Al and Alateen can, can help. help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit alanon.org slash help. and Associates Nationals post-game show. The Chatham Maroons win 6-5, ending the series in five games over the London Nationals, and they will move on while the London Nationals, unfortunately, are going home tonight in a just very bittersweet uh, turn of events here. Uh, Nationals storm their way back in this contest, up 6-5, or down down in this contest, sorry, 4-0 um, at one point. Uh, come back, make it 4-2, then go down 5-2 coming into the third period, and then just a beautiful, like, almost perfectly played third uh, to make it 5-5, and then just uh, Paranuzzi ending it in overtime, just not what you wanted to see uh, so far here for the Nationals. No, it's uh, definitely a disappointing way to end the season in overtime, but the Nationals, they fought their way to the end, and they clawed their way back into this game, and they should be very proud of themselves finishing second overall in the season, and what a phenomenal performance from them tonight. Yeah, and uh, take a look at the action that happened tonight. Uh, back and forth, as we saw. Uh, started out hard for the Chatham Maroons as just some beautiful work by them. Uh, their young kids came out to play uh, as Bra David Brown was phenomenal throughout this game. Connor Paranuzzi, as we said, scores the game winner. Lucas Fancy, one of their older guys on the team, one of the captains, he picks up another, another big goal. Um, Graham, another guy, his goal right here, silenced the crowd. 
a third goal. That one shorthanded. We thought it was over from right there. And then they come out in the second period and pile it on even more. Barry's first shift out there, uh, first shot against him, finds way to the back of the net. And uh, But the Nationals managed to come back. They found life. Jeff Burrick leading the way. Him and Lucas Char did everything they could to make this team have life and uh, just were phenomenal start to finish throughout this contest. Jacob Julian, another huge goal on the rush. Uh, the guys did everything they could, and another dagger as Dolinsky scores at the uh, just at the end of the first second. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams played a phenomenal game tonight. The Chatham Maroons just having no end. They've just trained for this all season. They came out to play, and they've had a very steady performance in all of the games that they've played against the Nationals, and ultimately that is what won them the series. As uh, Tori Alba comes in big, and then this whole goal right here, uh, Deacon Holmes, phenomenal moment for him. Uh, if that's the last member you have of the Western of being in Junior B, that's not a bad one to have. And Connor Paranuzzi, just phenomenal place at the right place, right time, buries it again as the Maroons continue to pick apart the Nationals by doing that cross-crease play and just buries it there and just ends the National season just like that in what is a stunning loss for the Nationals. Um, this team, as we saw throughout the regular season, uh, was a team that could have gone all the way. Absolutely, and I think a lot of the fans expected them to go all the way, and that's why this loss tonight is even more heartbreaking than expected, especially for players, for the fans, and for everyone who loves the London Nationals, for the whole entire London community. But with that being said, what a great victory for the Chatham Maroons here tonight. You could see their fans. They came out to support. And you could tell, you couldn't tell whose house this was tonight. It was a very equal distribution between the London Nationals fans and the Chatham Maroons fans, both, both cheering their teams on to victory. The Chatham Maroons now will head on to either have home ice against the St. Mary's Lincolns or will go to Leamington to face the Flyers in the Western Conference final. And uh, though that other series still tied 2-2 coming into tonight. So it's still up in the air who the Maroons will play as this has been their best season the Maroons have had in years and uh, one to be remembered for the Chatham Maroons. A fantastic, fantastic effort. A lot of young talent on that team. Team. Uh, someone like Brown or and Paranuzzi, both um, young 05 players. If they do come back to the Maroons next year, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Even if they can't make it past the next round, um, this is going to be a dangerous team going forward. Uh, the Maroons are a phenomenal team. Absolutely. Coming into playoffs, you think battle of the second and third place team, what's going to happen? A lot of people expected the Nationals to take this series, but simply that's not the case in playoffs. Anything can happen. Teams step it up, and the Maroons brought their game. And just looking at the, the season as a whole for the London Nationals, uh, a season of ups and downs, twists and turns, uh, just all over the place for the team. As they start the season back in what you'd believe was all the way back in October uh, that the season starts. And then you come through, you go through October, November, December, and then the COVID shutdown as we are off for almost a month and a bit as uh, we finally come back and it's a whole new team, new coaching staff, new players, uh, basically an entire new roster and organization is set up here and they have to basically start from scratch and they are a first place team at this time and it's just a uphill climb as they try to learn how to play as a, as a unit again because this is a team that's not used to playing with each other. They've gone through so much stuff throughout that first half of the season and then just to have all that ripped away, it's a big thing for the team. Um, unfortunately, they struggled going down the stretch, uh, fell out of first place to Leamington, ended up in second. Uh, you knew it was going to be a harder road. Um and then you end up in that first round series against a very game St. Thomas Stars team who the Nationals had handled throughout the regular season. But the Stars came out to play and made the Nationals work harder than what we had seen all season long, really showing up. And then the after game one of this season, uh, this series here against the Maroons, you thought this could have been over in four. Uh, the Nationals lighting up the Chatham Maroons 8-1 in game one. And it just turned a nosedive from there. Maroons come back in game two, win 6-2 or 6-1. And then 
a close game last Saturday night. They lose last night in heartbreaking fashion, and again tonight, this Nationals team has gone through everything. Um, my heart goes out to the graduating players. It's really hard to lose something like that, especially when you did work, put your heart and soul into this team and just worked your ass off to get where you are today. And uh, as we said, I've said multiple times throughout this season, um, the Nationals' mentality every year is Sutherland Cup or bust. Um, they have been a team that has – they don't – they take success as a expectation. This is, they don't expect to lose anywhere near the Sutherland Cup, if at all. And going into the season, they thought I, they looked great. Um, going, in, but at the very first game of the season, um, I remember talking to Ryan, and um, we actually thought we were like, "Who's going to score on this team?" We knew because it's been over a year and a half since we actually saw any of the contests between for the London Nationals. Didn't play all of last year. Complete nobodies this year, and um, they came out. Big names came out early. Uh, Jeff Burridge, we came out quick and just took the lead, got the captaincy, and was just phenomenal. That rotating door between the net, um, Aiden Barry, Owen Flores, uh, Gordy O'Dwyer, Gordy O'Dwyer down the line as well. Um, just a lot of guys in the net. So it was always who's who, if what's who's going to step up in the moments, and it who needed to be there ended up being there in the end. Um, Lucas Chard, phenomenal effort. Started out, earned an A halfway through the season. Um, guys like Deacon Holmes and Owen McGowan, just phenomenal efforts all through the season. Uh, just really going to be sad to see those guys go. And it's going to be a very interesting team, what we see next year. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to next season, seeing what the Nationals are going to take away from this year and improve on for next year. And as always, uh, thanks to all our fantastic volunteers that we have here. Uh, thanks to uh, Jake and Scott in the truck. They do some phenomenal efforts. Uh, they make me sound good. And without the, them, I would not be doing this. I thank them so much for doing this. And as always, thank you everybody so much for watching. We hope to see you next season. Our female coach Melissa Bartlett and I feel like that's also pretty rare having a female coach it, um, even in a female dominated sport there's a lot of male coaches so it's pretty unique that we were able to learn under her and just have like a strong female role lead us and show us that we um, can empower ourselves um, in sports yeah, we actually spoke to Melissa this morning as well as Vicky um, in our first segment with some coaches. So I guess for Sam, like you and I, we have a male head coach, which we are the only ones in this call. Um, do you think there's anything that you would want kind of male coaches or our male athletes to have in mind to help women become more visible in the world of sports? I would say just to like, I guess uplift us more and put us out there more because it's swimming. Like I find a lot of coaches focus on the males. Like, well, in Antigua, I find as well. Like I have a, my head coach is a male and I find even though I'll be doing as well as the top um, guy in the island, I'm, I'm from Antigua, but like if I'm doing as well as top guys in Antigua, I find that they don't put a lot of focus on me even though I'm doing as well. And even though we have like a, um, the manager of the team, like the person who started the um, club, is a female. I find she's even also like overshadowed, like she's also in the backgrounds. And I find like that's also a lot, like something that we have to work on as well in swimming that the guys should try and put us out there more, I guess, or like 
like showcase our accomplishments as well. Kelsey, right now you're playing overseas professionally. Um, when did you kind of know that this was the direction that you wanted to go after graduating? And how did you, I guess, what steps did you take to achieve this goal? Um, so I think it was something I knew I wanted to do early in my Western career. I think I've had conversations with my coach about it in my first, second year already. Um, so it was a goal of mine in university. And I kind of just kind of shaped like my training around that almost like um, I would do like extra stuff just because I'm like, oh, I want to take go to the next level. Like I know I can't just continue what I'm doing. Um, but from there, I had some great conversations with uh, Melissa Bartlett. Um, she introduced me to Olympian Sarah Pavin, and I had some good conversations with her because she used to play indoor professionally. Um, so it was great to get some advice from her. And then um, from there, I had some great resources doing stuff with our national team, and I was introduced to an agent who eventually helped me um, pick a team and find teams and go from there. And I've had um, the same agent for three years now, which has helped me along with my career. So my 